Hello and welcome everybody to episode 83 of the ADV podcast. We've got a really interesting episode for you today, talking about some good things, some bad things, some important things. Either way, I think we're just going to saunter right into it. So what do you think we get into what's new? Yeah, I think that's our first segment. Yeah, so what's new? Where we talk about what's new in China. And this time, our what's new is kind of a little bit of an interesting segment. We're going to be talking a little bit about a certain song and propaganda that we uh, took a look at last week. So last week, we, we played for you guys the Beijing, Welcome to Beijing propaganda song to yeah. welcome everyone to Beijing to come see the Olympics. But... You Ironically, can't you can't go to see the Olympics. So China just shat out. Like, this is the kind of thing that China spends millions of dollars on for promotional campaigns. Sure. But because no one can go and because there's so much controversy surrounding it, they kind of just shat it out. Yeah, some really garbage thing, which you saw last time if you were here. Don't worry, we'll do a little bit of a recap. We're not going to play the whole thing, but uh, we're going to show you about that. But first, we wanted to show you kind of a funny meme that somebody put together on our subreddit. Uh, which this, is, you know, it's rare <laughs> that I feel like we're overstepping boundaries. Yeah. And I get kind of hot, like, oh boy, we probably shouldn't be talking about this. That was a segment like that. Oh, well, I just felt like we were in dangerous waters. When I was talking about, we were talking to, about the dollar store. Yeah. When you go to Dollar General and it's like going to P.T. Barnum Circus. Right. I just felt like some of those people that maybe identify as the dollar I, store general. It's because people like you are too worried to talk about it that it flourishes. <laughs> it flourishes. No, seriously, it's not people, a plague. If people were were made conscious that the fact that the way they present themselves in public is absolutely abhorrent and like you know not correct, they might think about it, right? But if they're just like, oh, that's fine, they're beautiful people. I mean, it's a health hazard. I mean, I'm half joking though because I know that our clientele <laughs> is probably not no, those. Obviously. No types one that watches, nobody that watches our show is rolling up to the Dollar General to buy like a 99 cents egg or whatever it is. In that's an torn, expensive egg. Whatever, 99 cents, a 24 of pack eggs. of egg, yeah. the eggs in torn gray sweatpants with stains on it. You're you probably, know? you're probably and like a right. mesh top. You're probably correct. I'm just saying. Anyway, that's all good. Let's uh let's actually get into to the fun stuff, which is no, we'll get to it here. Yeah, because that meme is not fun at all. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. So this is the song from last week. Yeah. Uh, it's called "Welcome to Beijing." It's for the Olympics, and what we notice is that they hired a bunch of shills. Yeah. And we say say we say shills because they're foreigners living in China that are working for state media. I mean, look again in their defense. Maybe it's just what we like to term a white monkey job. Yeah, and, but this guy they, says reporter for. Okay, Xinhua. no, not not this particular. Oh, guy. Okay, I'm just saying so. some of them might be because this happens and it's happened to me. It's happened to you. When yeah. you get co-opted into. Oh yeah. You know they're like, hey, you know my friend needs someone to you know be a part of this song or part of this advert i did i've done it i've done it i've done an advert for cognac for goodness i did sunglasses yeah that kind of thing so you 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 just like pitch up it's like a day that That wasn't for the chinese government though no 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 they pay you a couple hundred rmb or a thousand rmb or whatever it is you do your thing and Mm -hmm. you walk away and like cool now i can go get drunk or whatever and maybe that's what happened with some of these guys sure i i was specifically talking about the the big dude Okay, yeah. Uh, because he's actually a reporter for... Yeah, so look, we, we told you that Xinhua. to give you a little bit of insight into who's behind these propaganda pushes, you know, the foreigners that turned up in this particular propaganda video, which remember, this is propaganda. It's it's the video for the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. Okay, so it's actually the state put this out to say, come to Beijing, you know, for the Olympics. So it is propaganda. It's all part of that. And there were these weird like hodgepodge of foreigners in yeah it. Okay. hadn't seen them before that's a, no, the thing is like it's just weird i recognize the one guy we'll talk about him as well but <laughs> it, it just didn't seem right they're not paid actors you know no. they're not you know like athletes no. or anything to do with the games they're just very random like english teachers and so on so that's why we thought we'd look into them to show you the quality of china's propaganda right so let's take a quick little recap But wait a minute. Uh, what's that? <laughs> Who's <Sorry>. this? <laughs> yeah, no. So we have to find out. Hang on. We have to find out who this guy is, first of all. No. We didn't recognize We have him. to find out something much more important than this. What's that? What is this song? Oh, yes, of course. What is this so song? So just, why don't you just play it? Okay, let's take a look. We're about to give it a go. Hold okay, on, wait. hold on. Wait. So, somebody told me, 
hey, I've heard this song before. Yeah. And I'm like, don't, don't do this to me, guys. Mm. Don't even tell me that China was so lazy to do a propaganda song about the Olympics that they legitimately just ripped off another song. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's exactly what they did. To be fair, you see this little girl, which, by the way, she's very young. She's 11 years old now. So right. when she made this song, she must have been eight or yeah, nine, something. Like that, something. Yeah. Whatever. That that little girl appears in the beginning of the Olympic video. As yeah. Well. So it's yeah. obviously a consensual. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, but it's like, how lazy it. is that? But think about this. By the way, uh, we watched this this music video you see in the background with this little girl. Um, from what we can make out, it's propaganda to have a, a daughter. Yeah. Because of the one child policy, most uh, families, they wanted a son rather than a daughter Correct. to carry on the family name. And it also means better support in your old age and stuff. It's kind of a crappy situation. I mean, it's secondhand yeah. propaganda. It's definitely just a pop song, like a yeah. shitty yeah, pop yeah. song. But it's definitely... It was kind of along that. We watched so, the video. It's kind of in that it's, vibe. It's, it's got that. Have that a daughter vibe. instead of a son. So the the title of that song is You Look Good great, Good When You Smile. Yeah. You Look Great When You Smile. Right. That's that's the title of the song that they've now reused and repurposed for this Olympic thing. Sure. Because, of course... It's not like that. It's not a, the same song though. They they've wiped yeah. the lyrics no, no, and then of made course. new ones. I'm just saying the the music's yes, the same, correct. the composition. So it's not like they don't have millions and millions to spend on I their know. campaigns. Why can they not make their own proper Come songs? On. Why do they have to repurpose this other one? But anyway, we thought it was kind of funny because the like we said, the lyrics of this song in the background says, "You look great when you smile." Right. And unfortunately, the guy who's playing the guitar. Let's take a little look here. You say playing guitar. Whatever. I don't think he looks great when he smiles, man. This is just mean. I I just gotta say it though. If you're going to make a song that says you look great when you smile, you should probably get people that look great when they smile. I will agree with you on that front. This is actually a train wreck it is and i mean i feel like they spent so much money on everybody's makeup and presentation the set and all stuff they could have could have done a little bit of work i think you're wrong about the set though it's just white okay whatever all right i mean that they didn't spend anything they're using real cameras not like a 5d no no that's it's very the production's great Um, a set of invisalign braces wouldn't have been that expensive for this guy (laughs) and then put it off for two years (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, they could have, I don't know. Okay. Maybe they could have anyway, the most important thing here is that the it's just a freaking copy of this song. Yeah. So they could even make a Beijing Olympic songs, which kind of, to us, made more sense. It's like, they're being super lazy about this, yeah. right? So, of course, they're just going to grab a bunch of random foreigners to yes, chuck in yes. this video. So it's a lazy song. It's a repurposed but song. Think about this for two seconds. Put it yeah. on qu- uh, Thick Tarantino for a second. Yeah. He's coming yeah. It's awesome. John T here. Now, I I know you guys might think this is petty that we're harping on the, about the song for two weeks in a row, but there's a really good reason for this. And it's because we can actually pick it apart and figure out some characteristics about China from this. Yeah. Um, and it's only something you could do if you spent some time there, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you just be like, oh, this is a cringe piece of shit song. Yeah. It is that, but it's so much more because if you think about it, imagine America, let's say America, put out a, tw- let's say they had the Winter Olympics in New York City. Okay. They say New York City or Lake Placid or whatever, somewhere where there's snow. 2022 Olympics, they would probably get really famous singers. Yeah, they'd probably like have freaking, uh, I don't know, like Ariana Grande. Or Ariana something. Grande. She'd be, you'd have Ariana Grande singing the bit. I don't even know bass. who she is. Okay. I just know the name. She's a, she, you obviously know she I is. I know the name, yeah. So you, you'd have her singing and you'd have a bunch of other singers that are really familiar. Yeah, yeah David Maroon, Hasselhoff. Maroon, <laughs> just kidding. Maroon Five or something like yeah, that. No, yeah, no, you're not a bit old. <laughs> okay, whatever. Ground, okay, yeah. I'm yeah, I'm I'm fucking up. You get Vanilla Ice because it's ice themed. Sure. See, we're actually destroying this narrative <laughs> okay, right now. Sorry. You get proper stars. You'd get real know. stars. Yeah, yeah. Is what my point is. We're just so fucking old. We can't mm-hmm. even think of anyone new. So you'd have real people doing this, and you'd also have athletes and things like this, which they had a couple in there. But sure. you see. China, which actually cares much more about face than, than America does, just dropping the ball so hard on this. And mm-hmm. I just can't believe how much probably went to corruption, honestly, to try to organize something like, you know what they yeah. do. They yeah. call Uncle Jim and say, hey, g- g- grab me a bunch of foreigners in Beijing. But we looked into some of these people. Yeah. 
And this guy, Jaunty, Thick, uh, thick Tarantino, mm -hmm. th Thickton Tarantino, <laughs> yeah. he, uh, Quasimodo here, he... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's, I, I just, he, mm. there are a lot of parallels, but from a jovial, I kept saying it's from a jovial. It's not it's like... It's nice. No, it's I'm nice. I'm not trying to attack the way the guy looks that much. I'm not going to make fun of this guy. What I'm going to make fun mm. of is what position he fills. I, we looked him up. Do you want to know what he reports? And yeah. this is not on him. You have to see, how, remember CGTN, they had like yeah. media challengers. We found out that a lot of these people are probably also media challengers, by sure. the way. It's the same company that owns it. Mm -hmm. It's all state media, but there's different sects. And this is global language as part of Xinhua, yes. New China. It's yes. all from Beijing, you mm -hmm. know, straight up propaganda. But the, the reporters that they get, you got to see the level of audio oh, we, and video they we, use. We thought that we'd just show you a little uh, interview that John T, John T over here did so that you can see who we're dealing with here. 21-year-old Tsinghua University student and Olympic shooter Yang Tian won the first gold medal of the Tokyo Olympics and claimed her second gold medal three days later. I really want to meet her in person. New this Cube audio. Studio, yeah. which I'm standing right now. Oh, okay, pause this for a second. Me yeah. This is the new Cube Studio, yeah. which quite literally means a green screen, yes. and they shrunk him down in it. Yeah. Um, did we had a little look at this. We didn't look through all of it, so you're going to explore some of this with us together. We have to pause it for copyright. We, oh, oh, by sure. the way, our past two videos have been demonetized through copyright issues. Yeah, we throw too many, too many of these things. Yeah, that keep so we have to break us. it up. Yeah. That, so mm. Apologies. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. I love this. Yeah, okay, let's see. Straight to Tokyo, where I'll meet my colleague from Miranda first. She's promised to lead me to Yan. This is the second biggest economy in the world. Yeah. Hi, Johnny. So good to see you. Hello, Miranda. Is this Tokyo? <laughs> Hey, you, good thanks. <laughs> this is Tokyo Big Sight, the Olympic main press center. Wear your mask, please. You notice how they they uh, pick the foreigner who's breaking the mask yeah, rule. Yeah, wear your mask, please. That's very much in line with China's propaganda, like how bad the foreigners are because they don't like masks. Look at disappointed look. Yeah, he's inside. like, God damn it, I have to cover my beautiful face with this mask. Yes, yeah, this poor guy. This <laughs> poor guy. He doesn't look very enthused. I, I got to say that it looks like he's just you know he's been goaded into doing this he doesn't look like he's enjoying this at all he's very lackluster. i can tell you what what he did not go to school for presentation <laughs> No. He, you know what I mean? Like, like, I, like news presenting. Somebody that goes and ends up being an actual foreign correspondent for a big news network, Al Jazeera, BBC. This is not that guy. No, no. All right. But well, that's the equivalent of China. It gets better. It gets better. Can you take me to where Yang won her gold medal? Sure, let's go. The first gold medal of the games was decided in the women's... Why is he standing in a still photo? They certainly could... Like, we could, you know, like, behind... it, Put, put our yeah. background up. Okay, yeah. This is footage, recent footage, by the way, taken in northern China, but there's... This past weekend, actually. Where the illusion is that we're sitting in front of a live background, right? Yeah, obviously we're not. We're not actually there. In... <laughs> anyway... Hey, 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 stop there, old man. He stopped for a second. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, what's it called? Uh, Thick Tarantino. Yeah. They threw him in a still image here. They could have had the actual video play sure. of the event. I mean, look, we, we can tell they're not very good at doing this. Let's, I'm let's, just shocked. Yeah, let's just see. Yeah, right. It must be tough to concentrate under such heavy pressure. Allowing Yang to overtake and win gold. And gold for Yang. Nice. <laughs> you can see his shadow. You can, you can see the shadow on the green screen here. <laughs> Dude, two pikey ass YouTubers, us, mm. are putting on more of a professional show with better audio and visuals than the Chinese state, state media. top, top Xin, state media. Xinhua. Xinhua like yeah. the top. Xinhua's really up there. Anyway, let's uh, let's see where this goes. Zhang Yang Qian is at the press conference room now. Would you like to meet her? Great. Let's go. <laughs> what was that? I gotta see that again. I gotta, <laughs> what was that? This I've never seen a more enthusiastic um, attempt at saying great in my life. Let's try that again. Great. <laughs> Hold on. I want the context of that. Okay. So, so why is he so why is he so happy again? Like, like go back. I want to see the context. Okay. I feel like he should be saying hold the door. Yeah. <laughs> Jaunty, Yang Chen is at the press conference room now. Okay. Okay, that's... Would you like to meet... Would you like to meet her? I wonder what he's going to respond with. Meet her? Great. <laughs> what? That's... 
<laughs> who says that? It yeah. says, would you like to meet her? I would say, yeah, sure. Yes, or, please. Yeah, yeah yes, I'd please. love to. I'd love to. No, anyway. Gr what is this? Great. great. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I love the great gym. Yeah. So, so we figured him out. Yeah, so We that's decoded Johnny. him, yeah. So he's a reporter, in quotation marks, for um, Xinhua. Everyone's tell it, saying that we should make that a new clip. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. No, for real, they are. I'll, I'll sort you guys out. Don't you worry. Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that's, that's gonna be a clip. So, so okay, when we originally saw this video and it popped up with this <laughs> Jake <Jimmy> Hodor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's Tanky Hodor. Yeah, he's Tanky Hodor. Yeah. Tanky the Hodor says, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, I mean, here's the thing. You look at his credentials and it says Xinhua reporter and you think, okay, this sounds... That's a pretty good uh, accolade, you know. You're, but then when you see his actual body of work, um, <laughs> you, you know what I mean. You the, could call anyone anything in China. Tanky Hodor saying great is the best thing that's happened to me in 2021. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty freaking good. Yeah, one, one might even say that it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got it. You got it. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, for those, for those of you who, are, <laughs> for those of you who wanted the sound bite, okay. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Oh go my ahead. god. Go ahead. Mm. Oh. <laughs> anyway, you ready to proceed? Are you ready to continue? <laughs> are you? Are you ready to continue Hold the up. show? Okay. <laughs> right. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Sure. Uh, would you like to hold the door for me? <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway. Um, <laughs> I think that's my new favorite soundbite, guys. I gotta say, it's just ridiculous. Uh, okay, let's... Uh, this is what happens when yeah. we don't plan anything. I know, I know. It's oh, shit. Here we gotta continue on with this. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... um. Oh, sorry, guys. Ready to oh continue? Because jeez, yeah. All right, back on track. Are you good? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, Just that's... take a break from the great. Okay, that's well. great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Stop. Well, that's not going to go away. All right. <laughs> so, sorry. Uh, back, back to what we were saying. Okay. Oh God, damn. So, so sorry. now we, now we know. Uh, the story behind John T, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so he was there. We're doing random... very important work here. <laughs> we certainly are. <laughs> the Olympics are magical. She spared our yeah, wrath. Yeah, no, we, we haven't looked into her yet. <laughs> no. We don't know who she is. <laughs> don't worry, we'll find out. Um, you know, we didn't look into no, him. Oh, we... no, we did look into him. Yeah, did yeah, he? he's I a didn't. he's a yeah. We did. I showed you. He okay. was he was presenting. He's like a social media content creator, but he's just a presenter for Xinhua. Mm. It was it was kind of boring. It was his travel stuff. Right. He he looks a bit more polished. Yeah. yeah. What about Guitar Shaggy over here? I didn't look up Scott Slepica. <laughs> That's okay. an interesting name though. Yeah. But yeah, he's a game localization manager, so we don't really know. We'll have to take a look. Yeah. The important ones coming up. Yeah! <laughs> hey, dear Wang. Dear Wang. Dear Wang, yes. Welcome to Day. Okay. Ah. Ricochet. Zing. Yeah, yeah Ricochet is like an Irish bullet. I There was an RC car when I was a kid in the 90s called Ricochet, and it you could drive up like walls and shit it would like flip over. It's called Ricochet. I wanted one so bad. Oh, it sounds Never cool. got one. No, oh, it sucks. Um, yeah, so mm. now I remember last time when we showed this, I recognized this mm. guy because. Having been in the newspapers a lot in China myself personally back in the day, and I'm talking way back, like when there weren't that many foreigners in China. Yeah. You know, you didn't see them in the media yeah. much. Yeah, I remember those so, days. You know, don't forget, I, I got to China in 2006, right? And I think the first time I appeared in the Shenzhen Daily was 2007. Yeah. And I was on the Shenzhen government websites. And, you know, you read about, like, they always have, like, a focus on on foreigner type thing, you see, which yeah. you get. Yeah, I remember Whenever those. there's any English-speaking, um, like, media in China, whether it's a local newspaper or some kind of national I was thing. on the local TV station. Yeah, they had exactly. those. They would always be like, what foreigners live in blah, blah, blah. Yeah, city? like, what do foreigners think of China type yeah. thing? Um, and so 
whenever a foreigner would appear, you'd read about it because you're kind of starved for English media, and especially in the beginning when you can't read Chinese and stuff, you you lack yeah. up everything. Oh, absolutely. So you're online if there's like I don't know Shenzhen stuff, <clears throat> Beijing cream, all these stupid websites, and then you're also reading the local newspapers. <clears throat> anyway, I remember they did an article about this guy back in 2012 or somewhere around there, 2011, 2012, way back. And I remember remember he was trying to get this mascot off the ground, okay? And it stuck in my head because it was awful. I remember th back then thinking, this isn't going to work. So because of your recollection, yeah. I did some research. Okay. And I found this guy, this Rick O'Shea guy. Okay, I'm going to do my best. This is not to bully him, no. okay? But this is a great almost anthropological window into the expat culture of China. Yeah. So let's look at uh, look at what I pulled yeah. up here. Okay. I don't know why we slow I slowed him down. I apologize. Yeah. Just so you could really solidify. Okay. So here's the deal. Mm. This dude is an American dude. He, apparently he's an ex DJ. Yes. Well, call I mean that's he went to I think it was Shanghai to mm. be a co. DJ uh, for a bilingual or an English language radio station. They don't exist okay. anymore in China. No, it was a thing back in the day. Like not that the, I'm, I'm aware of. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, he went there and he had a show, a DJ. He was a DJ on like a local radio show for a while and mm -hmm. then stopped doing that. And then he became an English teacher. Okay. So this dude, he created this thing. Yeah. This what you're looking at right now. This this emblem. This kind of stereotypical, almost cartoonishly stereotypical representation of a Chinese woman mm -hmm. and they called it Ba Bei. Now that the problem with this is, okay, well, you can all see it, it looks like the number eight, right? Okay, it looks like yes. the number eight. If you look at it, it's got, you know, the number eight. Well, you'll see and why ba, that's a problem in the next slide. Okay, we got that in the yeah. next slide, do we? Okay, uh, whenever it's coming. It says Ba like down there with eight, but look up here. Oh, Ba Be, he wrote he wrote it wrong on the website. He actually misspelled it. It's supposed to be Ba like the number Ba. We can yeah. show that later. Because it's a lucky number eight. Yeah. In China, the number eight's very lucky. Mm -hmm. Now this is this is a typical foreigner thinking that they can you know make a thing about China that they're a China expert type idea because he thought that he'll take this number eight Ba, which is lucky, and turn it into a mascot for China. But what he didn't realize is that if you're going to do that, you should use the Chinese character for eight, the way they write it in Chinese, not the, the, the way us foreigners write the number eight. That's not correct. And second of all, it's very stere stereotypical, I'd say, when it comes to... Uh, uh, I, I just look at this website. Well, I mean, never mind that, but... I want to mind it. it. It's kind of like a stereotypical what an Asian like woman should look like type yeah. thing. It's not very flattering. I mean, not a very good so idea. I would like to read you an excerpt here before okay. this actually gets very funny. Yeah. Um, it says, O'Shea descri describes himself, this is from the Chinese State Media article. Mm -hmm. This is from, this article is only from a couple years ago, by the way. It, I'm, I'm sure this is the article I read back in 2012 or something. Well, they took images from modern times to resurrect okay. it. Okay. Because that image, that picture where you just look at it's from 2018. 2018. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, uh, describes himself as a conceptual artist in his Sun Li Tun apartment, which he calls a home and okay, creative zone. I just got to say, for those of you who don't know, Sun Li Tun is the poshest, most swanky area of Beijing. It's where all the foreigners hang out, all the foreign brand restaurants are. It's kind of like the, the posh part of Manhattan or yeah. something. Yeah. It's, it's not, like Times Square. Uh, if foreigners are living there, they're living in a bubble. It's yeah. it's it is a bubble. It's not it's not representative of China at all. I just got to say. So when you hear about people hanging around in Sunli Tu and living in Sunli Tu, and you could be like, oh, it's one of those, basically like a glamper, really. You know, glamping. Yeah. Yeah. In China, <laughs> but he's been there for a long time. Sure. It's his home and creative zone, and has an international flair and features photos he took of singers like Teresa Tang, Anita Moy, and. Eric Clapton. Nice. As well as some small items, not only from China, but from all over the world. So they go on and on. But then it says, O'Shea has been struggling to promote Babe, mm. but he's confident that there is a room in this world for more than Hello Kitty. And this is a quote from him. My vision is that, he's talking about Babe Yeah, this here. thing that you can see in the background. <clears throat> it can be as popular as Hello Kitty worldwide and let Chinese be proud of Babe's mission to bring some good to the world. Sounds okay, right? No, it doesn't. Okay, because... 
First of all, <laughs> it's nothing like Hello Kitty. And second of all, why should Chinese be proud of something that some random foreigner made? It has nothing to do with it's China. It's got nothing to do with Chinese people no. or China. That's it's literally a that's, stereotypical That's image. what I'm saying about like these expats that think that they're going to now yeah. represent China. Yeah. And for some reason... Now, I will do it better than yeah, Chinese I'm people. I'm going to do it yeah. better than Chinese people. I am going to show the rest of the world that this Chinese non-Chinese thing that I made that I'm just saying it's Chinese because that I, I can't it, even spell in Chinese characters yeah, and I made it gave it an oriental face this is going to make Chinese people feel proud of their own country I'm going to mm. do that for them it's like this weird mentality that happens this Marco Polo kind of uh, yes know, that's a really good thing I'll, I'll have another thing to say soon sure. it says my background is not business I can create things that people love I've been looking for, but I've not found a business partner yet to support this project. Finding people sm why. smart enough with resources, finances, and connections would be perfect. Truthfully, it's been hard, difficult to find the right people. But if I persist in my purpose and finding a great partner to make this happen, I see so many insignificant images everywhere, and people coming have become walking billboards. I think we can make the world a little better with an image from China, right? This is not even an image from China. This is an image he drew himself of an, a number eight that he made the top part. We don't even it. know if he made it. Well, I mean, that's my whole thing is like <clears throat> an image from China. No, it's an image from a, uh, an American <clears throat> ex-DJ's head. So there's a very good piece of, uh, of insight here if you go forward. Okay. Um, I just want to show you what, what happens with expats in China, some delusions of grandeur that come. So here's... Here's him uh, bragging about some famous people that he's gotten to represent Babe. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. All right. <clears throat> and he brags about in the in the interview and also in other places. He brags about this being a uh, a free place where you can go download wallpapers for your phone of Babe. It's free. <clears throat> you don't even need an app or you don't even know need to know any coding. <laughs> Put a wallpaper on your back, and it says that if you copy these <clears throat> wallpapers with Babe and uh, keep on your phone, or, and keep on your phone, okay, it will turn your phone into a good luck piece. So that's what he it's turned not very this good into. Good English. No, look, it says Beijing 2018 is not old. Okay. So he kept this going for a while. Is my yeah, point. I just remembered from a long time ago. So keep going. He got a bunch of randos like in the street to pose with Babe. Like they got this. Like, <laughs> rando dude i love the rando dude down there there's no idea what this is those are all like iphone 4s and stuff yeah i mean like obviously some of these images are older right yeah. but my point is so he goes and says bob a on phones bring good luck from china so easy no app needed in yeah it's it's nothing it's yeah. a it's a picture what then, is this revolution? I, I mean, literally, it's like you could draw a little thing and say, here, download the wallpaper. It's going to bring you good luck. I don't know how he's trying to turn this into business. You can't sell that. No, no. But that's hopefully that's what this whole thing in the interview is. I'm going to find people that are going to merchandise. Yeah, yeah. This. I'm looking for people with finances. So the mo most telling thing is the next slide here. Okay. Yeah, get in there. All right. So if you look up here, it says Babe is getting popular. And this is, <laughs> this is, let me, let me paint a picture for you. You go into a bar in China and you meet this white guy. Yeah. And he's been in China for 15 years. Sure. Doesn't speak Chinese. Yep. Been staying in the same place. He knows a lot of people, obviously, but he hasn't really managed to get anything off the ground. In fact, he's still at the same ESL job. He's still sure. at the same English teaching job. Nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But when you sit down with him after his 15th beer that night, yeah. They tend to be alcoholics. Right? Uh, Not saying this guy is. It's hugely common, though. I, I got to say, the majority, I mean, us included. Let's not lie. Oh, yeah. No, Heavy no, drinkers. no. Heavy drinkers. But not one, that much anymore, but when we're in China, of course. I think it's just part of coping with the lifestyle. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I think, though, yeah. uh, my point is that mm. you either make something of yourself, which some people do, yeah, and you do stuff like we, we traveled around the whole country, we documented everything, we made videos, we built bikes, we did all this cool stuff, right? Not bragging. No. Saying, though, that there's people that get locked into this, my boss is going to take care of everything, my Chinese girlfriend or wife is going to translate for me, yeah. I'm not going to learn, learn the language, and I'm going to have these delusions of grandeur of yeah. these great business ideas I'm going to come up with. So sure. you're new in China, you sit down, the guy welcomes you, he's like, welcome to Beijing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's time and to give I'm, it a go. I'm not saying it's this guy, but I get these vibes, and he's like, ah, I'm, gonna, I'm working on this huge thing. It's actually already, like, domestically here, bigger than Hello Kitty. And yeah. here, look at this picture. You see, like, these people all over the world, they're already using it, right? <laughs> and, like, I'm just looking for people to chip in, you know, if you want to get a, in, you know, on the, on the cutting room floor here and you want get to get this project really off the ground and make some money here, 
this is this is called Babe. I'll let I'll let you in on this. Yeah. And you meet people like this. You've sure. met people like yeah, this, right? Where they have these like business ideas that just don't go anywhere. They don't do anything, right? And yeah. this at least this guy tried, but this is the delusion of grandeur in a collage. Yeah. Babe is getting popular. In that in China, a lot of times Because David Beckham wears a Babe. <laughs> correct. In mm. China, a lot of the times what happens is mm. Chinese companies or Chinese businesses will fake it until they make it, right? Yeah. They'll pretend like there's some international in, sure. ordeal or whatever, and actually their name is like XPQ394, and they're like, yeah, this is famous in London. Sure. I remember there's a bike shop near my house. He was selling bikes with this random brand that was absolutely Chinese. It was sure. some fake name, and he's like, yeah, these are really popular in, in Europe. They're from Germany. I'm like, yeah. no, they're not. Yeah, you know, not. They do this fake shit, sure. right? And so the expats, it rubs off on them. Yeah. So you can see here, like, you're meant, you as a viewer are meant to believe that Babe is in, uh, on like billboards. It's yeah, on coins. Then, it's David Beckham. Instead of the Glico man in, in Dotonbori, he's got him on the sign there. He's got him on stamps, on a coin, on a card, wrap, on, you know. But this is all just bad Photoshop. Right, go to the next one. There's another one. Yeah, I mean, look, like someone's getting a tattoo of Babe. Yeah, right. Which never happened. No. Maybe he got one. Maybe he got one. Um, it's like in city centers. What is that? A, a picture from the 1950s? It looks like, like Marilyn Monroe or something. You know, like, a, what is that? Yeah, it is. It looks like Marilyn Monroe, you know, with a picture of Babe. So, but the, it would be one thing if this is just like fan art or something. It says Babe is getting popular in that you're supposed to believe that this is really off the ground. Yeah, maybe. And this is, I don't know. It could be tongue in cheek, too. I don't know. Could it be? I just don't know how someone could expect this to be famous. Look oh, at yeah, the Photoshop look. on that. That's uh, pretty bad. Hey, they've even got it with the gun. Gangnam style. See, that shows you it's not that old. No, it's not. It's just um, 2013 on that calendar. It can't be that. Something weird. Is Gangnam style that old? No. no. Let me it's, see. When was Gangnam style? Out? That was like only a couple of years ago. We might embarrass ourselves. It came out in 2012. 2012. Holy shit. Okay. What's wrong with us? Anyway. Wow. Um, wow. We're like sad. Yeah. old men but anyway yeah. not to poke fun just i wanted to point this out because it shows you a little bit of a window into the whole expat like i stayed in a place that i don't really understand too long and i'm gonna do it better than the locals see i remember this story reading not i mean we only found all these pictures later and also the reason we know that he misspelled his own website by the way is if you look at the merch on the actual bag handle if you look at the bag that's behind him because he has a bag on the wall to apparently remind him about like his business or whatever it said that in the article. I'm not making that up. Yeah, okay. it did. It did so say it. to like inspire him, it actually says Ba Ba, but with the, the Chinese characters for Ba, which means eight. Okay. Right. But then when in the on next his, slide you can on see on his yeah. website it's it's or, sorry previous slide. Oh no, no, this one, yeah, right you can there. see the Chinese is incorrect at the top. Right. It's written Ba Ba with a different Ba. So it's it's just it's it's weird. Okay. It's just not right. Uh, anyway, the fact of the matter is, guys, um, not trying to harp on this guy or like really bring him down, but this is who they got to be in the Beijing Olympics. That was the be all and end Propaganda. All. Right. Okay. Now, there's something else that ties him to the Beijing Olympics thing, and that is Xinhua. Because the article that was written about him was written by Xinhua. I mean, the article talking about this ridiculous attempt of him to like overthrow Hello Kitty with this. <laughs> Dollar store, the Great Revolution you know, thing. You know, right. that it's made worse here. than dollar it's, store. I'm, I'm just sorry to say, but it, maybe in his mind, th to him, this thing looks fantastic. But it this really is, isn't. I feel like this is. I don't want to be like SJW or whatever, but this sort of image is your typical like 50, 60 year old white dude's fantasy of a Chinese girl. I'll be yeah. totally honest. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Well, either way, don't don't rag on the guy too sure. much. What we're trying to rag on here is the Chinese propaganda machine and the fact that they chose him as a representative of america because that's what it says in the song you got to make sure that you realize where this is all coming from it says ricochet uh li ke in chinese there and then in brackets mei guo which means america so here is an american welcoming you to beijing and that's who they chose just like the person who is before him is dear wang it just says you know her her name in chinese you know, and it says Zhongguo, PRC, People's Republic of China. So she's representing China. She's actually, she works for Xinhua. She's a reporter and well, she makes those weird songs and stuff. Um, so, you know, that's the thing. They've chosen him to represent America. So America, I hope you're proud of this man who's representing China for some reason for the Beijing Olympics.
But you know, that's that's why we have to bring up who these people are. He is an English teacher, an old ex DJ, and personally don't have anything against the guy. He's living his life, he's doing his thing. He had that ridiculous idea to make a, a fake Hello Kitty knockoff thing, which is a little bit offensive and a little weird and it is. And all of that kind of stuff. Apparently he tried to ask Jack Ma to meet with him so that he could promote this, but Jack Ma didn't reply. No shit. What a surprise. <laughs> Um, anyway, that's that's the, the the whole thing, and we're now seeing who Jaunty is as well. Who Jaunty's the man, the Jaunty Green Giant over here, who basically, as you can see, is what I would call not a reporter, okay, for Xinhua, just a stand-in, a stand-in I, foreigner. I don't want people to get the wrong idea. This is not important at all. No. Um, we just thought it was a good bit of insight, and it's Absolutely. funny. Yeah. So now you know two two of the people in that music video. We'll get to the rest eventually. We're not going to make too much of a thing out of it, but it's time for us to move, probably move on to our big segment of the show after a couple of super chats. What do you say? Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Uh, so Xi Jinping just made this is from uh, where? Who is this from? I can't see. This oh. is this is before the okay. thing came well, up. Well, the question. So Xi Jinping just made himself president for life, like uh, Erdogan did in Turkey. Ryan's running a third term. Yes, you're right. Uh, yeah, he did that a while ago. He wrote it in that he could do that. So, I mean, that's Charles, what yeah, that's what he wants to do. Charles Womack says socialist democracy is what the CCP is now stating they have. Is this just okay, <sighs> guys? I mean, Charles, I know you're just asking this for conversation, but yeah. for anyone that is believing this new bullshit narrative from the CCP that they are now a democracy but just a different kind, yeah. You have to understand that China is less of a democracy now than it was even 10 years ago. Yes. They're saying that, again, just like relabeling the, the coronavirus, just like relabeling CPC and the CCP, which I have a theory, by and the way. socialism, by the way. Socialism with Chinese characteristics and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But anyway, long story short, there, there is absolutely, there's no socialist democracy in China. It's one of the least free countries in the world, more akin to North Korea's ruling style. Yes, exactly. Um, so they just want to confuse people yet again. They've been seeing a lot in the, the news where people are saying Taiwan is a vibrant democracy mm -hmm. and saying that that's a good thing. And yeah. it's... it's it's really a positive thing, right? Mm. The rest of the world looks on, on this word democracy favorably. So they thought, well, why don't we just call ourselves a democracy then? Correct. There is no voting. There is no democratic principles. There's no checks and balances. There's no free judiciary, no. separate judiciary. There's really no characteristics of democracy at all no. in China. The internal party members at the top get to vote on who the next like leadership positions are. But only them, not the people. Correct. Uh, Power Shift says... Uh, Winston for governor of Pennsylvania, Governor Wolf is a wanker. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you. I don't know much about him. Uh, Black Halo 6, let's go, boys. Got to see one, this one from the start. Pepper Girl on the thumbnail looks kind of hot. <laughs> I, that is a ri absolutely ridiculous thumbnail. It's, it's something that uh, we'll touch on later sure. because it's all about uh, food waste. And we'll stuff. rush through it. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, don't worry. We'll get there. You do. Here's a little love from a northern Irish guy living in Denmark. I'd Thank love you. to see you guys ride around Europe someday. We'd love to, too. Mm. Doc Slothington. Old Doc Slothington is back again. Excellent. This time I started climbing down my tree last night so I could be here on time. And nice. it would take you a while being a yeah, sloth. Exactly. Uh, Logo App says that stupid Olympic song is stuck in my head. Well, Me too. Yeah, us too. Do you think we had to prepare this material? We've had it for the whole week in our heads, this crap. And then when we get the other one, which is the original song about smiling, then we got that stuck in our head too. Come on for your soup says, when will Chinese ox be a guest on the podcast? I think Hopefully we could probably, we could probably arrange it, but it's going to be scary. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll hit the rest later. Okay, cool. All right. So we're going to have to get on soft power hour where we talk about how China is changing your minds, the rest of the world's minds. And in this particular instance, changing the minds of the Chinese people and making a big mistake. Yeah. So yeah. recently there's been a lot of uh, stuff in China about reunifying with Taiwan. Yeah. Through so war. This this article, I'll let you go through it, but this this is kind of uh, a, a creepy article. And yeah. We're going to go through it quickly. You might not think this is creepy from the look of it, but basically yeah. what this article has, has been going around, this says, after reunification, how to buy a house in Taiwan province. Yeah, do you, do you guys just, you got to take that headline. After reunification, how to buy a house <clears throat> in Taiwan uh, province. So in other words, after we defeat them in battle and war and take back the Correct. island of Taiwan. That's what this is about. This is how you can buy houses there. Right. That's really insulting. And I think they're counting their chickens before they hatch. In fact, they're not even their chickens. They don't even need to have the eggs. 
They're counting someone else's chickens across the sea. Right. You know? So I will, I, I'm going to go through a couple points here um, sure. and I'll have to live translate. Okay. So pardon my grammar if I mm -hmm. get it wrong because I'm reading it from Chinese and English. So yeah. basically it goes through here and it talks about how ta Taipei's uh, real estate market is the more most expensive in China. So keep in mind, they keep referring to Taiwan, of course, as a as province China. of China, saying that it's even more expensive than uh, Shanghai. But you don't just have to, to buy a house in Taipei. They talk about the different regions of Taiwan and why it's better to invest in certain areas. Um, they go through some figures and all this kind of stuff. Um, but the insinuation is that after we reclaim Taiwan, this whole market is going to be ours for the picking. We're gonna, you're going to be able to go in there with your all, all your money or whatever and get your piece of land. And yeah. it's kinda, it would be kind of akin to like what? Like, Look, I mean, <clears throat> I actually got a different analogy for this. Okay. Imagine you're sitting in your house one day. You get a call from, I don't know, uh, a buddy of yours who's a real, maybe a real estate. And he's like, hey, can I just come take a look inside your house? I want to get some ideas. And then he brings clients with and the clients are like, yeah, yeah, this place will do. We'll, we'll buy it up. You know, we'll bash that wall out. We'll do this. And they're, they're talking about your house. OK, right. They don't own it. They're not. It's not even for sale, but they're coming in thinking that they can just do whatever they want in your house. It's kind of like that. You know, this whole idea of reunification, it is it's a disgusting disgusting thought for them to even put this out there as a thought exercise as an article it's it's really the, really insensitive the thing that well the thing i want to cap it off with is the most worrying thing is the comments the public comments below so keep in mind yeah. in china a lot of the times they'll just block comment sections period because they don't want people to talk about stuff especially right now yeah. right now censorship season in china sure. See, everything's censored around this time so mm. the public comments down here <clears throat> are basically talking about yeah will be really easy to take over Taiwan with our nuclear submarines. Yeah. Um, another one says, like, jump on it right after we blow up Taiwan. We we'll jump on that real estate market. We got this. How are they going to buy houses if they flatten the place anyway? Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Good point. Well, another. Yeah, because a lot of these comments are actually insinuating that it's going to be a violent takeover. Yeah, of course. So anyway, another person says, like, after reunification, is it going to be another administrative region, kind of like Hong Kong or Macau, special administrative region? And the thing that creeped me out was not about actually the the words that people use. It was how they said it. It was so matter of fact. Yeah. It's as if it's already done. It's because you what I think we talked with someone about this the other day. We had an interview the other day mm -hmm. and we were talking about how. Americans are sitting here thinking about how to be inclusive and stuff, which is fantastic. It's sure. a great part of American culture. While China at the same time is telling all of their people that they're going to go kill and murder and blow up Taiwan. Yes. And it's so, it's not a thing that they're teasing. It's so matter of fact. Yeah. It's, it's public conversation. On TV, they've got all these weird like documentaries and TV shows about how they're just going to take over Taiwan, how it belongs to them. And people are all up for <clears throat> war. They're, they've prepared their entire populace for war. And that kind of leads us into the next segment, which is where they pushed it too far. So this is, this is why I have some personal insight on this. Yeah. Now, because of articles like this, and mm -hmm. because of when you turn on the news and it says, we're going to take over Taiwan, look at our military, we're ready to blow them up. Mm -hmm. Those stupid separatist scumbags are, yeah. you know, they're, they're not going to stand a chance against our great mainland. We can't wait to liberate them. When you hear this over and over and over again, not only does it dehumanize the Taiwanese people, yeah. you also created uh, an enemy of America, which is gonna protect Taiwan. Yeah. The point I'm trying to make is it leads to people starting rumors. Yes. And actually, I'm not gonna say who, but a family member of mine actually got in trouble for mm -hmm. spreading a rumor about invading Taiwan. And you know what's weird about that is it's not a rumor if you put it all over state media all the time. Yeah. So what happened was, this person in my family spread uh, a WeChat post to everyone, as they do, because yeah. everyone was doing it. Mm -hmm. Everyone was doing it. This is not an isolated incident. Sure. About how you need to stock up on food because, because there's going to be a, a war. There's going to be a war, and obviously the soldiers need the the bulk of the the resources. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it wasn't like, oh, we shouldn't go to war. It was like, oh, just be prepared. Make sure just you go have buy food stock stuffs. up on food. He got in trouble for this, right? Mm -hmm. And it turns out this was, like I said, not isolated. This was being spread around, 50, was it 50 million times this was viewed well, or something? Well, okay, we've got to go back to the beginning. Okay, yeah. So what, what was it? The, the Ministry of Commerce in China put out, a, put out a, a message on, I don't know if it was Weibo, but they put out a, an official message to say, mm -hmm. um, it told, let's see, it says, <clears throat> it told people to stock up on necessities. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, 
that was put out there and then a hashtag started trending. Yeah. There was like hashtag the Ministry of Commerce tells people to stock up on necessities got viewed over 50 million times. Okay? That's right. And now this is an official outlet saying us. Now, it turns out the reason they were saying this, the reason they put that out there is because they're expecting more COVID lockdowns. Right. Okay. And they wanted to make sure people were prepared, especially it's winter now. So if there were more COVID lockdowns and they wouldn't be able to get to the shops and stuff that they'd have enough food in their house. Right. But at the same time that this happened, Chinese state media, various different branches of Chinese state media started to put out news that in Taiwan, people were were afraid that China was going to attack. And so they were panic buying and stocking up on goods. And they showed pictures of like people crowding in the shopping malls and all that uh, shopping centers to buy food in Taiwan. So this made people put two and two together and say, look, the government is telling us that we must stock up on necessities and look what's happening in Taiwan. They they're preparing for a conflict. There must be a conflict coming. Let's all go buy. And you can see some of this crap in the background happening. Um, panic buying ensued. And I mean, people were running into the shops, grabbing every last bag of rice and all the noodles and all the essentials. Mm. Shops were selling out. People were getting trampled. You know, the usual kind of stuff that happens when you have these mass panic buying sessions. Okay. Toilet paper. Everything you can think of was being basically ripped off the shelves uh, all over China. It's not just in one or two areas. It's all over China. Now, it turns out that, that what the Chinese news had put out about Taiwan was fake news. You know why people were out there buying? They've yeah, been, it's they, the well, stimulus, they got stimulus checks. Recently, um, you know, the, the Taiwan government issued stimulus checks yeah. to everyone in order to stimulate the economy. This happens sometimes, right? They get a stimulus check, but it has an expiration date. If you don't spend it by XYZ time, you can't spend it. So the time is about to run out. People all went out to spend it and use their checks. That's why there's so many people in the shopping malls and uh, supermarkets buying stuff. That's where those pictures came from. It's not because they were worried about a conflict. So you see how ridiculous it was like a, a perfect storm of misinformation. And of course, with the Chinese government constantly ra like saber rattling and it's all good, constantly saber rattling, constantly trying their best to get everybody to, um, you know, want to prepare for this war with Taiwan or get them ready to prepare. Of course, everybody thought that it's true. Stock up now. So you've had this crazy, crazy mass buying all over the place. It's thankfully mm -hmm. calmed down since, but it was just a ridiculous phenomenon. Yeah, I actually wanted this super chat here was um, uh, interesting. I actually wanted to cover this. It says, I've noticed a lot of shill channels popping up promoting China's food insecurity as if it's a pandemic, especially false prepper channels. And I've seen that too. Mm -hmm. Stop. No, stop it. So no. our point, the thumbnail and the title and what we're talking about is not that this is everyone starving in China no, and it's, no. it's, it's falling apart. Our point, and I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. So thank you for yeah. that. The point we're trying to make here is that how delicate the nationalism is. Yes. They can pump something so hard and you can brainwash someone from day one that we are going to take Taiwan. We're doing it now. Our army's ready. We need to stock up and prepare for this kind of stuff. And they put out messages and then punish them for believing it. Yeah. And then punishing them for taking it too seriously. Yeah. Well, what do you expect when you've created a bunch of a sheep that will do everything that you say because they're, you don't give them an alternative outlet to, to consume? Yeah. So, of course, this is going to happen. But then China, the Chinese government gets mad and punishes people over it's this. It's so ridiculous. So the be-all and the end-all of, uh, of this whole situation is there's not a food sh a shortage in China. What there is is a bunch of stupid people panic buying and emptying the shelves. And of course, they can be restocked. It's not mm -hmm. like China do yeah. doesn't have this the supplies to put them back there. But it's just this ridiculous panic buying that went all over the place because of stupid rumors, bad information coming out mm. of the government, bad fake news coming out of the government. Yeah. And then the rumors spread yeah. because that's how it worked. Like your family member who got into trouble is they get sent this message. Hey, the government said that we have to stock up and look, Taiwan's there's going to be a conflict right now. You better stock up. They spread it around. They don't even think twice they about did it. it. Yeah, I know because <laughs> like, the government did it. Yes. They spread it around and then they get punished for it. Uh, you, you're getting punished. Mm. You're getting punished for following the orders from your own government. Yeah. That is trying to stoke your nationalism, but not too much. It's yeah. like when they arrested those students, right? Those communist youth league students. Mm. 
for being communist. For being too communist. Too communist, because they're, yeah. they're following old Maoist principles. You can't follow that. You got to follow Xi Jinping thought. Yeah, exactly. It's a basket case it's of crazy. ideology, and it's it's crazy. And it's how dangerous it is mm. uh, for having a government like China is because you don't allow people to formulate their own opinions. Yeah. And it, you can see symptoms of this in the current scandal, right, mm. which we're going to talk about later. But um, it's, it's wild. It's wild that... China's gotten to a point now where they have to kind of do something about it. And I'm always skeptical. You know, there's so many freaking channels out there saying they're going to invade tomorrow, basically. Yeah. Not going to happen. Absolutely not. No, no. There's too much to lose here. Um, and I'm not saying rest on your laurels. Obviously, they're building their military for a reason, right? Yeah. But it's not going to be something like overnight, here we go. But China's getting into this dangerous, dangerous zone where they've needed... To, to stave off domestic problems, they've needed to pump up the Taiwan issue so badly yeah. that it's all everyone's talking about right now. And so it's a powder keg. Look what happened. Everyone went mass yeah. panic buying because Crazy. of one little one little thing. Yeah. And by the way, the, the Ministry of, of Commerce deleted that original right. uh, post. They actually got rid of it now. They got rid of it, yeah. Yeah, because they didn't want people to keep referring to it. Right. But you know what I think sold out first? What? Kellogg's Frosties. You know why? Why? Because they're... Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, from the supermarkets. Yeah, they actually yeah. do sell those. Yeah, in China. they do. They sell frosties. Believe also. it or not, yeah. it's not very yeah. popular. Um, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so that yeah. actually ties into the next. Oh, we can run some of these clips. Actually. Oh yeah. Well, I've run. I've run out of. Oh, these clips. did you play them? I wasn't even looking at them. Yeah, I did. Okay. I did. We've played them. Look, there are lots. I've been seeing a lot of other um, China-centric channels covering this. There is a lot of leaked stuff. We've been sent a bunch of things on uh, WeChat and so on of people panic buying. It's People's just one of those quiet. things. You're just quiet. Okay. Um, it's just okay. one of those things that you notice um, is happening a lot. And it is something that's happening in China right now. And that's because of these stupid rumors. But, you know, like I said, it's died down. We just had to point that out, give you a little bit, bit of perspective. But it's, it's a segue into the next next little thing here. Um, it's not just that, by the way, she's not dead. She's protecting yeah, she, her rice. Yeah, she's just... Um, look, there's also another thing which is a little bit more serious is the coal shortage that's happening right now. Obviously, we all know there's a coal shortage. That's why they've been having power uh, cuts and so on. But the, there are people that are being very badly affected by that. And those are the poorer yeah. people living in the north Yeah, uh, northern China. China, especially in Heilongjiang. Yeah, province. you know, the, the thing is, um, coal is what powers the heat up there. You've got heating plants, which basically burn coal, and they've got water pipes or whatever that run the pipes through the houses up there, the hot water, which heats up all the all the houses up there, right? And of course, the more rural people, they just burn coal in their little, those special beds that they have and the special stoves. To keep, yeah, the kung. Keep themselves warm. Um, and it's it's pretty ingenious how it all works. Sure. Very old school. It's like medieval stuff, but it yeah, works. It okay? works, yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is they rely on coal, but coal has just jumped up so drastically in price. It went from around about seven, 800 RMB for a ton. Uh, how much is that in dollars? Like 100 something bucks. Okay. About a hundred bucks. About a hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's about a hundred bucks last year, and now it's over two thousand. So now it's like like two fifty. Yeah. So it's yeah. more than double the price. And you have to understand the poor people up there cannot afford. They use coal. Yeah. They when you use... go up north, you'll see you'll yeah. smell coal when it the, when it's in winter. You can smell the coal being burnt. The briquettes. They use coal briquettes to heat everything. Yeah. And it's too expensive. Yeah. So people are just burning everything. Um, burning corn. They're burning clothing they're burning um husks they're just burning absolutely everything that they can to kind of uh avoid paying for coal because it turns out things like uh you know I'm gonna so, popcorn there in a second uh, yeah that's gonna be a mess you know secondhand clothing and um uh you know various other commodities that you can burn is actually cheaper than coal so little little pro tip not a pro tip but a little tidbit mm -hmm. um People don't like secondhand stuff in China. Yeah. So secondhand clothing is garbage. No, That's nobody right. nobody will ever. No. You know, whenever you think you're donating your secondhand clothes, if you think they're going to China. They're certainly not going to China. If they go to China, it's so that they can be like repurposed and sent off to India or, <laughs> or something. Or burnt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, uh, people won't wear secondhand clothes in China. No. It's, a, it's an interesting thing. So this is to combat the Wu Maos before they come in here. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you're always covering like these rear, weird, like tiny isolated incidents. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's insinuating. I'm making a straw man here because okay. it is going to be a real man as, okay. soon, as, as soon as this is over. Um, that's insinuating that the poor people don't count. Sure. And yes, the average person in the city is not de burning their pants. 
okay? Sure. But guess what? A huge chunk of China is very, very poor and lives in the rural countryside, and they're people too. And yeah. they're, they're going through this. No, I mean, you have to understand, when you go to the, rur the rural villages, even inside of the large cities, when you go outside of the city centers, the, the lifestyle, the way of life is a very toned down. People are very frugal with their money. They don't have money to spend. Right. They recycle things. They do whatever Keep they can. Keep in mind, the poverty threshold is $400 a year. Yeah. It's actually less than so, that. So, I mean, you, you have to understand that to buy coal, when it costs that much, it costs too much. You cannot, you cannot afford to actually buy the coal. You have to come up with other situ situations. It's pretty dire. And mm -hmm. I, we were having a discussion earlier and I was like, you know, these guys should move away from the cold areas, but you can't because of the hukou system. You born in China in a rural area in the north, that's where your hukou, which is kind of like an internal passport. It is. Yeah. Uh, Similar so, to the Soviet say, Union. You can't just go to another city. You can't work in another city. You can't get uh, you can't have any rights in another city if you don't have a hukou from that area. You can't even rent a place in another city without a local hukou. In a lot of cases, there are a lot of things you can't do. You can't take advantage of any social programs in a different city. You're not entitled to anything. You are like a, a, an illegal immigrant, really. That's the miracle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is. Anyway. It makes um, no sense, by no. the way. Uh, anyways, so it's, it's a tough situation for the people up there. Uh, anyway, so that's the, the whole be-all and the end-all of the food shortage thing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not a like a, a freaking endemic crazy thing. It's yeah. worth talking about how easily the powder keg can be set off. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'll am i be honest with you. I think I, there's a lot of too much media out there that focuses on there's this big flood and everything's going to be doomed. Winston and I have never said China's doomed. No. China's not going to collapse. I think a lot of you might be disappointed it's, to hear what, that. What it is is the it's government under, is yeah. not going to collapse. It's under mismanagement is what it is. Um, it's under mismanagement. There's a lot of issues that go un unreported, and yes. they're dis they're worthy of talking about, especially because the people can't do anything about yep. it. They can't reach out to anyone about it. They get punished for talking about it. So you know, we haven't yeah. brought up in this episode yet. What? Balsack. You're absolutely correct. Who is that? Balsack? Yeah, you know this guy. Balsack. Right. So for those of you who don't know, Peter Balsack, otherwise known as Peter Dazak. Um, he's kind of in the Something news again. Happened, yeah. Something happened. We're verifying it, but mm -hmm. it looks as if he's been caught out with some emails that have been leaked. Uh, and he very much is very much responsible for um, the COVID-19 thing kind of happening, to be honest. If is, this, if got, this turns if out if to be true. If this is true, he definitely has a lot more responsibility than just helping the Chinese government hide right. the outbreak. And until is, until we verify in Minecraft. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to verify. And once we know for sure, we'll definitely talk about it. But we just thought we'd bring in old, uh, you know. Absolutely. Back. It's necessary. It's necessary. Exactly. Whoa. <laughs> Somebody said, whoa, improved ball sack. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, we have two ball sacks now. We got more than, we got more than two. We've oh, got we the got original lots. source of this material. So don't worry, there's a lot more coming. Yeah, you guys will never figure out where it's from. Them. Yeah. Is there 10 ball sacks? At least. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of sacks. So it's time for us to move on to our Wumao Corner, everyone, which is where we talk about... We need uh, some super chats. Right? Hate and all that. But apparently, according to Seamog, we need to do some super According chats to me, first. how about according to how our show works? Okay, so we're going to talk about the, the hate and the ridiculous um, sycophants and so on in a minute because we have to take some of your super chats. Sorry. Let's go. Quinn F says, they're not working for the CCP. They just met a lady who was really enthusiastic about the Olympics being in her country. <laughs> kind of like Vegetable Lord. Yeah, that's right. Just yeah. really, I just want to help him. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to lift him up. Right. I don't know why. In my mind, he's turning into Owen Wilson. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Dustin Pearson. Uh, Lei Feng, who is basically a fake uh mystical mythical creature yes. <laughs> mythical person that china made up to promote communism back in mao's time yeah leifeng helped farmers pee out their gallstones <laughs> Shui 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 Lei Feng. Hao Ban Yang. yeah exactly. uh, that means study leifeng you'll see him around he's got this uh kind of russian hat yeah he's you know got a russian hat what are those called like those ear flaps yeah it's got the ear flaps it's just that russian kind of russian hat. ass hat um it's a real person they took photographs of him and stuff but he yeah. was basically a made-up mythical person he's always in the right place at the right who time who did all these heroic things yeah. but it's not true for communism yeah free speech respecter says bad news guys i lost my pants can you be on the look and look for them i'm freezing my dazex out here oh well, yeah. yeah yeah you know old dazek ball sack you know what he's i like how Peter Dazek has become Peter Balsack, and then balls have become Daziks. They are, they have. I mean, yeah. let's be honest. You it's kind of like if you went to Urban Dictionary right now, it's probably like Dazek is Balsack, yeah. vice versa. Dazaks are balls now. They're just balls. Absolutely. Punched them in the Daziks. Because absolutely, we all know about old Peter. Right. Balsack. You have a son. 
hopefully at some point his Dazix drop. Yeah, right? exactly. Right? You get old, your Dazix kicked, are swinging you get low. In the, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, anyway, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Just to solidify that out Just there. Just making, making sure everyone knows... So we can there's a lot of things you can find out there. For example, if you look at milk dog, yeah, milk that's dog. in the dictionary. Yeah, don't know where they got that from. Mm -hmm. uh, Cloud Blue Moon DRM says, "OMG, my first live. Much love to you guys. Thank you for informing us, and thank, thank you, Cloud thank Blue you. Moon DRM. Thank you. You know what? It's it's so nice to to hear from you. You know what? It's actually just great." <laughs> oh no what yeah. have we done what <laughs> have we actually done yeah uh ji chia says the answer to the lack of creativity is because communism and authoritarianism destroys an individual's free thinking and i would agree with you that's true For um i mean look i just want to say quickly because uh, one, one of my ex-girlfriends was a a graphic designer mm -hmm. okay. in she China, worked, right? Yeah, in China. And yeah. she was Chinese and she worked for the this this design company and they made all sorts of things but Although she was qualified, she was very qualified, she studied, had all the degrees and everything like that. If somebody came from Hong Kong or Taiwan outside of China, basically, to work in the firm, they get paid double what she got paid. They would right, actually right. pay, they would pay external talent, like outside of China, creative talent double, just because they were actually creative. Right, because they needed that. They needed that, that skill yeah. Set, yeah. Because it doesn't matter how qualified you are and how amazing you are at actually doing the skills. The creativity is just not born into people in china it's not allowed to flourish i should say it's right. not like it doesn't exist right anyway sorry let's continue deer wang and ball sex should be dating hmm i don't know about <laughs> i that. don't know i think they might be married yeah well could not be to a, each other not to each other no frederick york what do you think why do you think the Zhang Li story has got so little traction i googled it sea milk's video is the only one at the top is it a sign of infighting i usually say no it could be no this um, time definitely because he he's in jiang Zemin's camp and they're just about to have that very important political meeting. So for a scandal like this to break out now... Break and then get covered up. Covered up and be on everyone's minds and stuff is definitely a power play by the Xi Jinping camp to we kind should, of shut them down. It's it's something we can entertain instead yeah, of just I'm, saying... Yeah. I, I'm just going to say yeah. that that's very possibly it's very the, likely. the reason. Because, yeah. you know, it would never have allowed to be like... It would never allow it to have been happened if it was... It's very weird that it happened. Mm. Uh, we'll probably get into that at the end. Yeah. JJ, some money for Winston's David Hasselhoff albums. Thank you. Wait, does he have more Super. than one? Well, he's, I, I don't know, actually. A terrible musician. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's not a great actor. No, what was his song I'm looking for? Free the... Um, I, you know, it sucks. That's terrible. If you look at the... the what's it called? The Berlin Wall mm. getting cut down, you know, and all these people getting free and stuff... And you don't see him, and you're like, that is like the coolest shit ever, right? Yeah, all these people getting their iconic. freedom. All, yeah, and then he's like playing a country song. When you hear it, yeah, and you hear what song represents that, you're like, what is actually is happening right now? Yeah, they just latched onto that song, you know. But and, uh, why? Because it was about freedom. It's but got it's, the word freedom in it. It's so kitsch. It's like yeah. a monumental he occasion. On his yeah, he had lights on the jacket. That's for God's that's kind of cool. It's kind of iconic. It's like commercializing. And he had the... his he had like his Knight Rider car there, Kit. He was dancing on it and stuff. You know, not, around that time. It's kind I of just funny. feel like in historic events, we shouldn't use something that's absolutely going to be very dated in the future. I don't know, man. It. Like I got the Knight Rider car. You did. Yeah. yeah. Not because of that, right? No, but it's iconic. I like it's to iconic, think that my yeah. car was there at the Berlin Wall being taken down. It was. In a different reality. In a different reality. <laughs> yeah. F FMR says, having a beautiful dark beer while watching this. Prost. Also, Peter Who. Oh, you know. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you like the fast sack? Or do you like... Do you, oh, by the way, do you like fat sack? Because you can see he's a bit chubbier on yeah, this yeah. one. Or... Do you like the original? I, I'm, I'm partial to both. I kind of yeah. like the quick punchiness of the new one. Yeah. yeah. Give me another one. Give me another okay. one. Okay. What, this one? Fast sack! Boom, boom. Yeah. And it, the ball sack is a bit higher in the, in the yeah, octave. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of cool. I like the, I, I like the new one because it's fresh, man. It's fresh. Yeah, just fresh like those, sack. Just like the duds on those dudes in the, in the, the thing. Right. <laughs> Someone says, wow, sea milk hates fun. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, it's great. Yeah. I'm glad David Hasselhoff was there. It's just, that song sucks. <laughs> it does I suck. wish it was like something moving. Yeah. It's too like, I wish it was like, you know, like a great anthem. Yeah. You know, something like that. Not like a shitty Dude, pop song okay remember it was the it was a german audience and it's you know kind of like them. no but it's kind of like when you listen to german songs you don't really know the lyrics it's just more about the feeling of it yeah you're right so a lot of them probably didn't really understand how terrible the lyrics or dumb the lyrics of that song were but they just heard freedom and it's like 
I mean, when I, I list it's daily, Knight Rider, which had been like smuggled in to, you know, no, East I Berlin get it. And stuff. I mean, I listen to Fichtel's lead on a daily basis. Yeah. So there we go. So, yeah. Yeah. If you guys know, you know, yeah, I'll do a couple more here. Cool. Uh, free speech. Re- oh, sorry. Um, sorry about that. Uh, J E T S says, uh, don't worry about demonetization. You do you. And we will like, subscribe, and comment, and join the patrons. Oh, thank you yeah, very much. Thank you the so patrons much. really do help. Mm. Everything, everything helps, man. Yeah, it's, you guys just watching us helps. We love you all out there. I'm skeptical about the like, the like thing. I mean, but it, it's it good. Helps. It, helps. it makes us feel good, and it helps us oh, sleep at dude, night. It, it helps. Uh, free speech respecter, Sea Milk. When you're flying, do you always remind yourself to lock the bathroom door? How do you know that? Did I ever tell that story? I don't know. No, I don't think so. I, don't, I never heard that story. You understand how creepy that is if I've never told that, right? You probably did on some live stream somewhere that I haven't watched. It was, like it was fairly re- No, it was re- fairly recently that it happened. Oh, okay. It was not at that time. Oh, okay. Weird. What the? F- anyway, we'll figure it out later. No, I'll tell the story. Okay, what is the story? You always tell your goddamn oh, story. I'm not saying. <laughs> I thought you were trying to hide it, okay? <laughs> just joking. Yeah. No, I went took a piss in, a, in, the, in the bathroom, obviously, in the plane. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was on a Cathay Pacific flight. Right. Oh, it was. I think it was when me and you were flying. Mm-hmm. Remember, we went to Hong Kong. Yeah. Like the year before the protest. Yeah. Um. I, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Did we fly Cathay? I'm pretty sure we did. Okay. Anyway, probably that flight. And I went to go take a piss. I was kind of groggy, you know, taking a piss. I forgot to lock the door. Ah. And the flight attendant went opened in. the door. Ah. She didn't see anything. Right. Just I was finishing up, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, she's she was wicked mad. Oh, okay. She was like, "Can you lock the door next time you're using the bathroom?" And I was like, "Gee, sorry." You probably should though. There's I signs agree. Everywhere. I was just waking up from a nap or something. You know what I mean? Oh, I I still follow basic things like I put my seatbelt on when I get in the car. I'm I understand. It was right. a mistake. Okay. All right. Okay. Huge cool. Pine says uh, Quentin Tarantico just dazacking an overlay. <laughs> It's okay. true. You know it. Yeah. Okay, I'll put in a, a quick ball sack there, yeah. Well, and he also mentioned Quentin. Oh, Tarantico. he did, didn't he? Great. <laughs> just great. Let's continue. Okay, okay yeah. let's go. All right. Thank so you, we're, we're getting back to the Wumao corner. Now, there are these, for lack of a better word, foreigners living in China that are trying their best to suck the jiba of the CCP. I'm pretty sure you can figure out what jiba means. Okay. They'll figure it out someday. Yeah. That's what they're doing in order to uh, boost their presence there, um, boost their social media status, and also kind of ensure their stay. They don't want to get kicked out, you know, so they try their best to, you know, suck off the CCP. So, Whoa, now you give it away. Yeah, now this, this is uh, what we saw this week, which was hilarious. Okay, so this one, this one guy, he posts this thing. He's a shill. Yeah, the shill guy. This guy's an absolute moron. He says... In China, kids at this age are attending extra classes like English, dancing, sport, and art. There's 0% chance you'll see kids living on the streets in China. USA government, get these kids off the streets. It's disgusting. Retweet. So for those of you listening at home or listening in the car, um, he posts these pictures that appear to kind of be homeless children, all in their sort of, I don't know, four or five years old, thereabouts, okay? Three of them. So we look at these pictures and we're like, hang on a second. First of all, I got to ask you, okay, we're, when we were living in L.A., we would see a lot of homeless people, but we wouldn't see homeless kids. Okay, you don't see a homeless kid lying on the street there. By himself. Yeah, that's what Child Protection Services is in, is in America, okay? If you are a scumbag homeless person and you're putting your child in danger on the streets, they will actually come and take the child away from you, all right? That's how it works here. People can report if they see someone abusing a child or a child's being neglected, left in a car, you know, with the windows up or something. The cops get called and the parents have a big deal to deal with, okay? This is just absolutely ridiculous. This does not happen, okay? However, in China, it does. You very often see beggar children on the street, sometimes with missing limbs and burn victims and stuff, which unfortunately, a lot of the time, they've actually had their arms, you know, they've been maimed in order to to earn more money begging. The fact of the matter is, I've got so much footage of homeless children of this age, p- particularly of this age. Remember in my recent video, and you used that clip too, of all those beggars in a row with all the beggar children there, okay? Now, the guy says, first of all, there's 0% chance you'll see kids living on the street in China, which is just a, an outright lie, 
It's just an outright lie because not only have we seen it with our own eyes, everybody who's been to China around tourist areas has probably seen a, a filthy bigger child there. You see it with your own eyes. I filmed it. I've got tons of footage. So it's 100% you find kids of this age, okay? But then he says, USA government, get these kids off the, the street. It's disgusting. Retweet. So what did you do? You decided that you'd take a look at these pictures, right? What did you discover? Well, I mean, it took me two seconds to see this, and I was like, are you, are you kidding me? Did you just post stock photos? So it's very simple. You can right-click a freaking picture and then search Google for it, yeah. which I did. It said, in China... There are what I just copied his tweet. Don't yeah. think I'm being serious. No, no, yeah, you copied I said in China there are Western shills who use stolen stock photos to pretend like there's a child homelessness epidemic in the USA. There's a hundred percent chance you'll see these kids kids begging on the streets of China. Get these shills off the internet. It's disgusting. I retweet. So where I you know, I proceeded to show the, the, stock the stock images. These are stock. This is stock footage. I, so I, I included them. Yeah. Like, you can buy yeah. um, this stock from iStock, this picture of this uh, homeless, so-called homeless uh, American street boy lying on the ground, okay? You can buy it for $4 with a one-month subscription. So obviously what's happened here is somebody's taken a model, dressed them up, and taken a couple of photos for a stock photo site, okay? Um, let's see. Then we also have these other two. There's an LMA stock photo, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know what I mean? It's just so disingenuous and ridiculous what these guys are doing. Now, I don't, I don't show like Twitter drama. I, the the point we wanted to make of, with this one, actually, I we should have shown the aftermath. It was absolutely oh, hilarious, hilarious. Hilarious, hilarious. This person, basically, you know, when you're 12 or mm -hmm. you're 10 and you're on the playground and you're wrong about something. Yeah. And then you say, and you're really insecure about it, and you're ashamed, and you say, "Well, actually, I was just that was, that was my trap, that mm. was my trick, you know. Yeah, I was exactly. just I was just tricking you guys, because you do that to save face, right?" He goes, "Oh, you fell for my my anti-China trap. That's my hater trap. So you fell for my post." It's like, it's like what? what are you talking about? You're a grown ass man, dude. Yeah. Just own up to the fact that you tried to trick people mm -hmm. and you're an absolute R word. So, so look, the, the reason we showed you that is we want to show you the depths that uh, some of these guys will go to to suck the CCP off, okay? And to create <laughs> fake, you're going all in fake them. outrage, you know, because it is, it's fake. To say that the, those are pictures of homeless kids in America and the USA government get these kids off the street and they're stock photos. He tried to throw some stat at me and he, he meant it said like certain amount of homeless kids in America and I looked it up and it's foster children yeah. in foster homes. He's talking about like these fake beggar ass kids that they dress up in like dirty yeah. clothes to lay in the road. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, we don't even need to get into that. I don't want to talk about for I, kids and the fact that America adopts huge amounts of children that have been thrown away in China. I mean, think about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, how many Chinese people from mainland China are coming to the U.S. to adopt kids? Zero. So, so. Zero. Number um, two. Anyway, I, yeah, I don't want to bring that. up the whole China homeless kid thing because it's really effed up. It's like effed it's up. I've super about bad. It. I got a video on the kidnapping. We could that. go into like really even grosser depth though, and oh, it's, yeah. Yeah, like, it's terrible. We've got videos which we could never share. Right. No, never. No. And I, I refuse to watch them yeah, ever again because yeah. we've been shared through uh, WeChat. And Chinese stuff people send like, them to us. Yeah. Just awful things, awful, awful things. So yeah, we're just not going to go into that. So yeah, just it's have bad. to point that out. So um. I, we should probably should we just get worldview out of the way and then do a big q a um yeah we could yeah. do that okay so we're going to hit worldview where we talk about things in the world and uh usually kind of like what's new but it's worldview. okay i'm going to turn off your mic for a second just to reduce an echo okay, okay. There an echo? just for a second um okay so uh this is in my wheelhouse as so i just covered it mm -hmm. this is uh john gaoli the guy that on the right uh i mean dude looks like he rapes doesn't he so his hair Look at his hair. So um, we, on the left, we have uh, uh, Peng Shuai. She's ch one of China's best uh, tennis players ever, right? Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. take it, let it chill for a minute. Okay. You'll be able to chill. use it in a second. In a um, so what happened was she released a Weibo post, and Weibo is kind of like Twitter, right? Yeah. Weibo is kind of like Twitter. And what she wrote was this big, huge text about how she was uh, in an affair with this CCP dude. Yeah. He was really really important he's recently retired but that doesn't mean anything in china you're still in the yeah. if you're in the game you're in yeah. the game for good it's like the mafia it's just like the mafia it's like, it's how the mafia works 
Um, so anyway, this guy, John Gali, the, the guy that looks like a specter slash corpse with a comb over. Yeah. He uh, forced her into a relationship. He, he, he basically ghosted her and brought her back. And she, out of anger, basically posted this huge thing on Weibo, which got scrubbed immediately, insinuating that he, you know, forced her into an affair. Yeah. Now, this is important because it's not like TMZ or like, like Jerry Springer or some shit. In China, this doesn't happen. These affairs happen all the time. CCP officials abusing their power happen all the time. This yeah. is ubiquitous across the board, having mistresses. Yeah. What doesn't happen is them coming out in public and having people with the balls, the really the Daz Oh, you mean the... To be able to talk about it, right? That's why it's a little, we're a little skeptical now at this point as to how this, this Weibo post even came out. Mm. There's a couple of things that are alarming. This is, and this is assuming you've watched my video. If not, watch it after this. But a lot of politicians, especially high up, I mean, this guy was top, top 10, right? Their names are blocked. You can't even search you their names. You can't search their names. Well, you can search them for like a Wikipedia article, basically. Yeah. The equivalent of a Wikipedia article, like a Baika article. But, but you, you can't, can't like make a Weibo post. You can't post. make a Weibo post about someone like yeah. that, right? So it was a bit weird that that was allowed. Um, but then, of course, it was completely scrubbed off the internet. And people in China were very confused. They're like, why? This happens all the time. Like, people have mistresses all the time. Why is this getting scrubbed? And then the conversation turned to censorship. Why Why are they censoring this stuff all over the, all over the internet? And that's dangerous, of course, for the Chinese government. But what prob... No, I'm not going to say probably. What may have happened, may have happened, is that this was allowed to proliferate because there's something happening internally. Yeah. In China. Yeah. Xi Jinping has not been out of the country for how many months now? 21, 22 20, 20 months. 20-something yeah. months. He's missed all international conferences. Yeah, he didn't go to the smog climate or whatever. The smog climate. Yeah. The smog Well, because he's living in a smog climate. He didn't need to go anywhere. He didn't need to. Smog climate talks. All these world leaders come yeah. together. He's not there. Mm. Weird. Little coward. Little stupid coward. Can't leave his Zhongnan high little harem of death or whatever. He can't exit those gates, get on a plane, and do a very important diplomatic trip. Which everyone else did. Every other country. <laughs> yeah, little coward, Xi Jinping. <laughs> so oh. Pigeon-hearted coward. <laughs> wow. Anyway. So, um, long story short, you got this situation with Xi Jinping. Um, internal struggle, internal strife. Jiang Zemin camp versus Xi Jinping camp. You got this guy, Zhang Gali, the corpse specter. Mm -hmm. He's in the Jiang camp. Oh, yeah. There's all kinds of purges happening. It's a bit weird. Um, got to confirm stuff. Obviously, I don't want to jump on this, but there's a, it's it's a big deal that this happened. Um, the point that we brought this up was actually the next post, I believe. Was there two? No, I think that was the point. Oh that no, was there's there's something funny that they they've been. Um, let me see if this. Yeah, works. you could probably. Help. They've been uh, censoring th things so much that they even banned and blocked a Korean TV show, which is called The Prime Minister and I. Uh, in China because oh, yeah, the there's story, a picture in there, yeah. yeah, the story is just too similar. That's nuts. It shows you how ridiculous. A K-drama. Yeah, exactly. About, obviously, she has an affair with the prime minister or something. So because that storyline is kind of similar to this rumor and whatever's going on, this this case is slanderous, weird case. Scandal, they, yeah. Scandalous case. Sorry, not slanderous. It's not slanderous. It's true. Because of that, they blocked a K-drama. Shows you how petty and insecure they are. It's ridiculous. So I just thought I'd throw that in. It's kind of funny. It's... It's to me, because this is weird, it's from 2013, this K-drama, right. right? But it's been kind of popular recently. Sure. It's crazy to me. I think that Streisand effect, like people would be like, well, why is this suddenly randomly blocked? You yeah. know, seems yeah. pretty insecure. Exactly. But anyway, that's what we got today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, yeah, so it's now it's time to... for Q&A where we answer your questions and you question our answers. Let's get stuck in, guys. Chuck Tilly says, Winston, why don't you enable YouTube membership so we can support your content or respond to questions? Uh, thank you, I will. Uh, you know, it's actually just laziness on my part. I, I wanted to do it right and set up little icons and stuff. I haven't done that. I did it and I didn't, I'll be honest, like Patreon turned out to be much more popular. Mm -hmm. So to be fair, I think Patreon's a better thing just because like you can actually respond to yeah, we, direct we, we messages every morning. Every day yeah. we sit on Patreon and, and reply to every single message that's sent to us. Yeah, at least, it's just what we're used to. At least once or twice a week at the very minimum. I'm, do, I do them every yeah, morning. Yeah, you, you do, do them every day. You do I, sometimes every I get caught up, but I always catch up. Yeah. You know, I catch up. Uh, I'm it's dumb. It's important because, you know, the people that support us mean a lot to us. I'm dumb, but I ain't that dumb, says his name ain't Quasimodo, but he's still got a hunch. If he don't sing the song, he won't be getting lunch. Okay, nice it's one. An interesting little poem. Yeah, I like that there. little limerick. 
this guy mm -hmm. says, people have told me China isn't racist towards black because they love the NBA and Black Panther was a box office su success there. Entertainment and societal acceptance are very different to me. Am I wrong? You are absolutely not wrong. Yes. Um, that is a different realm. You can't say that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway. Um, where are we here? Uh, GETS says, great balls act. Okay. Cool. Oh, you forgot. What? Well, you said great balls act. Oh. Great. <laughs> I feel bad okay. if this guy sees this. No, I mean, look, oh, it's, he God. bought it upon himself. If you're going to go and work for Chinese state, state media true. and take part in Chinese propaganda, you're fair game. Okay? Sure. Sorry to say. You're fair game for jokes. Yes. I'm not yes. going after you. I mean, you. who knows? This could springboard your career. Maybe you can get some inside info and then go and like... Sell it to, sell foreign, it to governments. foreign governments or yeah. something. Yeah, maybe you can become a spy. Maybe you can. This could be your entrance. They'll be like, He's, you already have an earpiece and you're in Beijing. Yeah. You know, like, next, I, worked, I worked for the Chinese state media. Next year, be insight into what they He's said. British. I mean, he'll be with MI, MI6, right? Yeah. yeah that's Is that right. MI6? I think MI6. Yeah. Yeah. Not M16. No, he'd be an MI6. He's going to be MI6 agent and you're going to be like getting ear directions one ear and then like the directions from the CCP in the other ear. <laughs> Dude, and it's going to be great. Yeah. It will. It's going to be great. <laughs> Dude, Bob. Recently, yeah. a YouTube news channel deleted a video about the 2022 Olympics boycott after just two hours. Are Wumao so fast or could there be more to it? Sometimes um, people delete videos if they've made mistakes. Sometimes yeah. they, they delete videos because they get copyright uh, strikes and takedowns. And that's, If it's Olympic stuff, it's very easy. It's probably, I had six uploads of my Olympic. I did a video called Why China Can't Afford to Lose the Olympics. Mm. Six uploads it took me. Yeah. Six. That's it, probably what happened. Just to get rid of like all the copyright stuff over and over again. I had the, even pictures and stills from the mm. Olympic Committee images. They were like, eh. Yeah, the IOC is like really hardcore They're in claiming, yeah, claiming their copyright. So you use a tiny little clip of like someone doing the, the wooden horse or whatever that crap's called. Never, and yeah. like, eh, sorry, copyright claim. Never get mind, here. never mind uh, boycott Beijing and boycott the Olympic Committee for being yeah, such they, dicks. They, well, they're supporting Beijing. <laughs> my six special sex pet division <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's not fair he might yeah. not be a sex he, he pet. might not be we yeah. get called that all the time just because we got married I know, makes no weird? sense yeah. al kami uh says, probably a nice guy just he's probably took, a nice took a different, guy he, he just took a different took, di took a different path took the wrong path but you know in his mind it's still great <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yes yeah Okay, uh, Al Kami says, strategic ambiguity, ambiguity is appeasement of an authoritarian communist regime at the cost of a democratic free country. Mm. At least until invasion Thanksgiving. What? Okay, wow. Not making any claims no, that's here. That's a bit of a mouthful there. Brian, mm. Brian Watson says, you're providing me with a much needed comedy after a, a hard week. Have a great weekend. Great. <laughs> Okay, all right, yes. Yeah, I'm really settling into this one. Yeah, this is a good I, I clip. I love it. It's you, definitely the best. It's a great one you whipped up. Yeah. Black Halo <laughs> 6, this week is more of a train wreck, wreck than last week, and I love it. Okay, cool. I thought you were going to come in with some sort of sound bite. No, I don't. What, what sound back? I don't, I don't think there's anything that no, represents that. No, there's nothing that goes with that one. Frederick York, how is the... <laughs> How's the wall in China? You mean the... Great. Wall of China? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Steven, hey guys, saw your vid on China's bioweapons. Do you think that my grandma's contribution to my DNA will be enough to save me from the CCP's racist bullets, or will I just lose 75% of my motor skills? Uh, who that's knows? A, that's a good one. Uh, who knows, one. yeah. DJ says, all I want is a great. Great. <laughs> great is popular now. I'm glad. I thought that this. It's my new favorite song. I love it too, but I, th I thought second rendition of Ballsack would be the real hero. Yeah. Well. That's, I'm, 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 I could go either way. Yeah. Uh, Void Pilgrim says, you guys got me randomly yelling Ballsack like I have Tourette's. <laughs> going to get me in trouble at work. Yeah, I know. Every time you go ahead and say. Ballsack. Yeah, you probably are going to get into trouble. Adrian says, great balls of cotton. Okay, well, watch. Cotton. Okay, we got cotton. I think you missed the first word. Oh. Great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just great. Try it again. Okay. I, do I have to do it all yes. again? Okay, so great. Great. Cotton. There we Did go. Did I get it? Did I get you it right? You got it. You okay. got it. All right. Let's Steven, move on. Steven with a great. Oh, come on, Holy guys. Shit. All a right. Too far, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Brybio says, can we get a combination of Tony the Tiger and Tanky Hodor? They're yeah. great. great. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to get old. Oh, this yeah. no, Balsack didn't get old. He no. just got a rendition, or yeah. a redo. Yep. Uh, Frederick York says, isn't Peter Dazic a great oh, guy? Cotton Balsack. Cotton. Balsack's quite a great, great guy. He loves cotton. <laughs> Come on, all right. right. <laughs> Bjarni Christiansen says, great show, lad. Yanti's great comes off so sarcastic. The tone of vo voice and body language says, please get it over with or can, can I, I go, go now? now? Exactly. It does. It really exactly does. Exactly what Yanti's doing. I mean, you got to give, give him. Okay, one more. Great. Okay. <laughs> Ryan G says, I was watching Deer Show and somehow I think it gave me Lyme disease. <laughs> Anyway, what are your thoughts on Singapore? Have you ever been to heaven? Um, it's an authoritarian country with much more freedom than, than China. Um, I mean, we'll probably end up going as, for yeah. some reason. There's I, always meetings and stuff I there, was so. going to go at one point. I did yeah. because of a, a visa issue. It would have been too much of a hassle, so I didn't go. I know they do a lot of book stuff there, so if we ever finish our book that we're talking about writing it someday, mm. we might have to go there. Oh, yeah. uh, Spartans. Hey, fellas. Only been watching a couple weeks, but I love the show. Thanks for all the entertainment. By the way, can I get a ball sack? Yes, you can. You can get a classic one. Classic. Don't forget Peter Ballsack. He's responsible for helping the CCP hide the what was going on with the coronavirus and the fact that it was spreading. He's really got a huge weight of responsibility on his shoulders, and it seems more and more with his Eco Death Alliance. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, Cav Ca Cavaliotis Ainois says critical hit. Thank you very much. Yeah. James says, well, thank you guys for all you do. Your content makes the world a better place for years to come. Glad you're having some fun at the same time. Love thank you. Both. We appreciate that. Stephen Kraft. Hi, guys. I can't stay for this podcast, but I will watch it later. Here's a small contribution to the beer fund. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Varun Shandar says, love from India. You guys have a truly unique and well-rounded perspective of China that's missing in the global mainstream media. Keep up the good fight. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Jim Flagg says, I saw, I saw your show earlier, and I'm sorry what happened to Vivi. Thank you very much. She's very brave for letting you tell her story. I appreciate that. Deanne Chapman with uh, 1444. Deanne, I think that was intentional. I <laughs> will not forgive you. That Bob Bay is real cultural appropriation. Yeah. That's true. It's like a Caucasian doing aboriginal art. That's that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, or some white American pretending to be an American Indian. It's that's not, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. It Re happens a lot these days. Return to Orc Monkey. It's been a minute, but the monk has returned. We have, we the missed monke. you. The mon monke? monke? Yeah. Uh, beers on me. Thanks, as always, for doing what you all do. Might be off topic, but I also wanted to say that the Beep Ape fundraiser is a serious Chad move. Y'all are awesome. So, Thank you. Guys, please go down in the description. I'll at least look at this. Maybe you can help just, get the word out, actually. Yeah, just, Share just, it around. Just go take a look. Even if you're not interested in buying, go look at them. They're beautiful works of art. You know, yeah. you can you can probably download and use it as a wallpaper if you want from that site. Even. Just it's like just Barbet. Like Barbet. It's a good luck charm. But Ray Pape mm. and the Beach Monkeys, um, we, got the, we commissioned some art to get made. Fantastic artist from Sweden drew these pictures for us. And uh, we're auctioning them off as NFTs. Of course, you'll get the original if you win. We'll ship that to you as well. They are <laughs> original artworks. And it's there to help women that are in bad situations. The Coalition Against Trafficking of Women is my, my biggest um, choice of charity that we're going to donate to. And, of course, uh, the one, the Rape and Incest ne Network in, in America as well. But it's there to really help women in need. So please, you know. Give it a shot. Uh, what I wanted to say is that the those NFTs, the the real artwork that you'll receive, if you can't, if you're not gonna, if you don't want anything to do with it, but you think that it's a good cause, then please help us share it around to people that you think are more interested in charities like that yeah. for women's causes. We appreciate yeah. that. Uh, Ty Sloan says, "What do you think people will have? Sorry, who do you think will have more people in the future? China, India, or Africa? All places have over a billion people. How long till Africa rises? I think. I mean, Africa is not a country. Yeah, it's a so. continent." Uh, you know, that there's some in interesting statistics on the growth explosion in Africa that happened, um, which I can get into at some point, uh, something I learned in school and so on, you know, which most people don't know about. Koala1203 says, I see dry land, rich sunshine made of... That's this... making a comeback. I'm actually using that in my new video that will be released tomorrow Oh, excellent. Morning. little cotton. Yeah. This world-class good people all in all body <laughs> yeah. uh black halo six bro that's a tattoo that's permanent <laughs> Is Sorry, that's, a fake, yeah, that's that's a fake <laughs> don't worry it's not real crab man i'm really looking forward to the next adv series conquering northern siberia when will you release it maybe someday we were going to do the trans-siberian railway we were actually 
but you know, um, COVID got in the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sias, could you remind us who Dr. Balsack is again? Oh, you mean <laughs> that picture. Okay. Yeah, I know. Eco Health Alliance guy. You mean Death Alliance? Yeah, Eco oh. Death Alliance. Uh, he helped basically trick the world, and you know, like this whole gain of function thing. There was a a, a hold put on the funding for gain of function, so he used his weird eco health alliance crap to get around this to get the funding still to go to gain a function which is probably what landed us in the situation with the pandemic and then he lied on behalf of the chinese government and he also wrote like papers and got other scientists on board to write papers to trick the world into thinking that it wasn't coming from any kind of genetic research or some natural occurrence he's done a lot of things and he's run defense for china and the ccp from the get-go all because of his by Joe and KTV nights that he's trying to. It's defend. it's actually looking more like he is the bulk of responsibility yeah. behind the Wuhan lab thing. Yeah, absolutely. He's really, really a bad, bad dude, and we have to keep reminding ourselves can't let him escape because he might actually be one of the most responsible people in this whole situation. It's looking like that if we yeah. can confirm. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthony Saint says, keep it up guys, they're about to crack. We were in the beginning, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Logo app, I was in grade five when Gangnam Style came out, Lamau. Wow, you are very young. I didn't know we had such young, yeah, young just, you people. know, for me, it's still a modern new thing. I don't know why. Your artwork style and your avatar looks very familiar. Someone I know actually. Mm -hmm. um, wow, sorry about that guys. Mm -hmm. Um, where, are you, where are you getting yeah. to? Well, oh, sorry. I entertained sing yeah. or something. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> Why not? I don't know, because I'm not a great singer. Oh, okay. Well, at least you're honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's... Oh, sorry. No, yeah, it was. I was. I'm guys. Do not. There don't run away. Okay. Griffin Yera says, your podcast is so good. I think I would describe it as great. Great. Okay. Uh, Forge, today, pottery for sale in Irish shop. No info on where it's made. Dutch barcode and address on PO Box in the Netherlands. Went online to check, and yes, it's made in the People's Republic of China. China. This is all the time now. Keep up your great work. We're seeing a lot of people try to skirt the made in China thing. Yeah, yeah, because they, they know that it's not a good look, so they're kind yeah. of tricky about it. Um, Roman Ray says, I have a couple of questions. What's the, what's the Chinese accents? Is there a difference in regional accents? Is there a difference in the Chinese versus Japan accent? Absolutely. Oh, huge. Huge, huge difference. Um, like if you say like, you know, they have Hokkaido dialect and Tokyo dialect and all that stuff. J Japanese accents are nothing compared to Chinese accents. Yeah. The dialects in every different town and city. Every town will be different. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, for example, like if I, even just, this is just a very drastic example, but if I say um if i say uh where are you right yeah. and i'm from the north of china i would say Nizai nar yeah right with an r but if i was in the south say so, Nizai nali right and it sounds very different right and nali if versus you're in the nar. north you're more like yeah, that's kind of what they say if you're instead in of way shima it's like Wurma, Wurma. you know that kind of thing it's there's huge differences they got erhua up there I mean, Not but that's fan. that's just like there's minute differences. There's all of uh, there's tons of like for example, yeah. there's a uh, where I used to live in in Baotou in Inner Mongolia. This is not Mongolian by the way. This is still Chinese. Yeah, I'm talking in China. This is not a Mongolian word. This is Chinese Han mm -hmm. Chinese yeah. people. Um, for example, if I say "meo yong," "meo yong" means like uh, this is useless, yeah. Yeah. right? "meo yong." So, so let's just say, uh, for example, Winston got me this CD recently, "Pure Moods." Um, I can't believe you got this for me, yeah, by the way. Yeah, this, if you guys, <laughs> if any Americans out there will absolutely remember what this is. Pure Moods was this like infomercial that would pop up and it would be like, Pure Moods, sail away, sail <laughs> it's away, really bad. sail away. And yeah. then, ay, 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 it's all those crappy oh, hit, hi, those radio uh, hits we had in oh, South Africa all the time. It's weird they didn't play these on the on the radio. But anyway, he know he he collects rare music for me. Yeah. Some people to some people, not to me because I, I would cherish this. <laughs> some people would say that Zika Zika Mayo Yong, right? This is useless <laughs> I would to me. Say it's useless. But in in Baltar, I used to live, Mayo Yong is Dechus. So you can understand how different mm. some of the accents or dialects are. They're crazy, yeah. crazy. Absolutely. Different. So a lot, there are there are a lot of different accents. Anyway, let's move on. We can um, give tons of examples. We could. Mm -hmm. Um Oh my God, I have that CD, brother. <laughs> hating on pure moods. I'm not hating. He bought it for me because I wanted it, <laughs> you dumbass. Andrew Bomer says, great ball sack, ADV. Okay. <laughs> you missed the key element. I, I did, I did, sorry. Oh, the, sorry. Great. <laughs> <laughs> 
what have we done? Yeah. Hilarious start to the stream. Any uh, news on the Chinese hypersonic missiles? The U.S. seemed to be caught off guard. Okay, this is interesting. I have a theory on this. Mm -hmm. If you have nukes, right? Yeah. It doesn't really matter how fast they're getting delivered. You can't. I mean, the, the real situation is if someone's firing nukes, right? That other country is probably going to retaliate with nuclear yeah, war. Yeah, the, the difference is a hypersonic missile is something completely different. It's something that's unpredictable because what happens is it gets shot up into orbit and then it can just kind of fall down wherever it wants. So you can't, normal missile defense systems can't stop it. I'm aware of this. Yeah. I'm saying if a country is going out of its way to fire nuclear missiles at another country, that country is, both countries are dead, right? Yeah. Like the world is over at that point, pretty sure. much. Well, so to me, it's like, okay, you can have a better delivery method that lands on its target better. Great. But then America's just going to retaliate and blow up the entire country. Yeah, but if you hit strategic targets sure. all at the same time, it's, you can really... It's bad. Yeah. I'm just saying nuclear war is probably off the table, period. No, let's hope so. Let's hope so. No one ever wants to see that. I mm. certainly hope not, no. Yeah. Um, Jordan Laramore, I'm applying for a summer abroad program, and I can choose between Japan, Taiwan, and Korea. What do y'all recommend? I'm not sure where to go. I recommend all of them. You know, me personally, I would I, I would say Japan. But then again, when I think about it, I think if you actually wanted to have a really good time, you'd go to Taiwan. I, I agree. Because I agree. Taiwan has a lot of the, the things, the aspects of Japanese culture that would draw me to Japan. But it's a lot more fun, if that makes right. sense. Because Japan's a very strict society and um, it's very stringent. And there are a lot of rules and etiquette that you absolutely have to follow in Japan, which you do not have to follow in Taiwan. So you can go have a blast. So I think if you want to have a great time, Taiwan, if you're very interested and fascinated in Japanese culture and that kind of thing, Japan. Right. Mm. Um, where am I at here? Ross Wolf says, Mom, I want Hello Kitty. Mom says, we have Hello Kitty in Beijing. Bob Hello <laughs> Kitty in Beijing is Bob May. Yeah. And that is a good use of that meme. Yes. Um, I feel like you're low-key defending Bobby. I'm not. I think okay. it's terrible. <laughs> just joking. You went after me when I was making fun of it. No, I just think it's not... I mean, you can't it's crush not a man's impor dreams. No, it's not important. I also don't think it's that important. I think people overhyped the fact that we were trying to make drama out of something. It was no. not. No. I thought it was good insight into like kind of what happens when expats stay in a place for a long time and don't really... China gives you a big head, man. They, they, it you, does. You start to feel more and more important because that's the thing. Like The locals never challenge you. Okay, they always treat you as you're if you're so something smart. special. You're so smart. You're so handsome. handsome. You're this, and you know, a normal so person, a normal, well-rounded person would be able to see it for what it is and kind yeah, of move on. For sure. But if you live there long enough, and if you are a slightly weak of character, it really gets to you, and you yeah. develop this massive big head to the point where you think that Jack Ma is going to meet you for your stupid mascot and find right. you, and you're going to be the one to like show the rest of the world. Um, and give Chinese people pride with this stupid, terrible mascot. We, we can say what we want. Mm. I could never even imagine Jack Ma's 50th secretary online even reading an email from me. Uh, just like, imagine we were like, oh, our Churchill motorcycles are so cool. How about we uh, get Jack Ma to fund us to mass produce them and then we can claim this is a Chinese treasure. Like what? Ooh, how? Yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. The dude doodled something um you know on a napkin and it looked crap and then he got someone to professionally make it and it still looked crap he certainly did i mean he probably got some inspiration from some of these songs it's very much in line with that aesthetic you know yes especially this like deep forest and Adim adimaeus and enigma <laughs> from sadness yeah just what? stop those songs are terrible it's cringe we, we were jamming out earlier yeah we're you know what, we, what else we were listening to it's gregorian monk chants yeah well that was a just gregorian yeah. yeah they were covering like uh, metallica and metallica and stuff amazing i used to have a co-worker who loved that he's like he told me he calmed me down he was this like very old like well older afrikaans guy he'd be like he'd be like this calms me down i really like to listen to this stuff and he'd put put it in on the office and it'd be like Simon and Garfunkel and stuff, but by monks. Hello, darkness, it's, my old friend. It's cringe. There's some parts of the 90s that just shouldn't have happened. Okay? I love the 90s because it was unabashedly like a trend will happen out of nowhere and it makes no sense. Like my mom had that tape. 
<laughs> Everyone was listening to chant. It was called chant yeah. from Gregorian. It was just the name Gregorian, and that was a trend. Mm. What? Why did Gregorian monks from Spain, from Spain, walking around with cloaks on, become a trend in pop music? Yeah, I mean that's why I love the '90s. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you know, some might say that they were great. I certainly would. <laughs> I certainly would. <laughs> but really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah anyway we've ordered some tapes we collect very bad music terrible stuff yeah thus the pure moods mm -hmm. um, democracy is a government from the people for the people uh, usually dictatorships in South America say that they are democracies because they claim they are a government for the people even though they are not from the people bullshit of course yep Daniel Caven ball <laughs> he wanted a quick punch didn't yeah, he yeah he just yeah. wanted a quick little uh, case closed 93. The Taiwan story reminds me of how Hitler pro promised a single family home to every German citizen after Germany conquered uh, more Liebenstrom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Black Halo 6, how to buy property thing pisses me off to no end. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of creepy. It's just disgusting to do that. It's, it's literally like as if here in America, people started to put out catalogs at your door like, okay, we're going to like chuckle the Navajos off their res reservation. Here are the choice bits of land. Why don't you start planning to build your house here? You know, it's that kind of thing. Right. Daryl, as longtime fan and American expat watching in Dubai, mm -hmm. uh, do you guys have any interest in doing ADV Dubai? Um, it's never mm -hmm. crossed our minds, yeah. but you know what? It's not out of the realms of possibility. Sure. I, I know people in Dubai. Sure. I mean, riding around there is... You get to see some sand Yeah. and some really good buildings. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like... I guess it'd be like going driving through Shenzhen in the sand or something. Yeah. Or maybe even more impressive, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've driven through the d deserts of China, so. Mm. Uh, you um, know that in Dubai, it's going to be a different thing, though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Carla, I've... You can't, uh, like, drink anywhere yeah. except in the hotels. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Carla, I've recently watched your coal mine video. You have previously spoken about the immense wealth of coal barons. Mm. Are they not state-owned mines and operations? Could you dive into this at some point? Yeah, this is a weird thing. Like, I know barons of... I knew a baron I hung out with quite often of uh, Rare Earth Baron. Okay. Didn't graduate even middle school. I think he dropped out. Mm. Really fun guy. Good businessman, but, like, uneducated is all get-go. But he rode, rode bikes, right? So yeah. we rode together, and we used to ride around in his suv together this guy lit quite literally had like probably a hundred million dollars sure and the only reason is that his area they found rare earths right yeah. now that you don't own the own the land so you would think oh how are you gonna get rich off that well you don't the government will will pay you for you to manage that area mm -hmm. right so this guy is sitting on all this rare earths and yes the government owns the state-owned mine and stuff but he now can control the entire business surrounding the mine mm -hmm. and all the corruption that comes along with it, right? Sure. So these coal barons operate in the same way. Yes, it's state-owned land, and they don't own the land, but they own the entire operation surrounding that thing. Yeah, because historically they were there. Correct. Dark Metals, uh, Kevin O, Matt, uh, Burkhart Eisvold. Burke! Yes. Is that the press conference room now? Would you like to meet him? Uh, yeah, please send in Burke. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to him in a minute. Yeah. Uh, I've noticed a lot of shill channels popping up. Uh, this is from J.E.T. Yeah. Yeah. Popping up, um, promoting China's food insecurity. Yeah, oh, that we earlier. read that. I'm sorry. Yeah. J. Hill 4221. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Cabanas. It's a great day as it is payday. It's a great day because <laughs> it's payday. Also, China talking about Taiwan real estate sounds like the Nazis plan to invade Russia for future Aryans or the U.S. plans for manifest destiny. Very eerie. It is yeah, eerie indeed. Very eerie, yeah. Uh, Neon Noir. What do you think of Nick Fuentes' argument that China is less woke than the rest than the West and we should support it by virtue of that? He can go fuck himself. Uh, that's a terrible I don't know who that is, but that's a, like wicked bad take. It's it. a very bad take. Yeah. Uh, rad, rad. I didn't mean to be so harsh, by the way. It's just that made me mad. I don't. Mm -hmm. Who is Nick Fuentes? Then I. Let me. Sounds, let's sounds... check him real quick. Yeah. An American far right and white nationalist political commentary and live streamer. Well, there we go. He's very young. I mean, look here. At the end of the day, we speak about this: how the far right and the far left both seem both to of them, embrace yeah. China as some kind the of the far, the far. Yeah, they're both fine. And they're both wrong because the reasons why they, they think they like it is actually false. And it's just something that China says. It's not what they do. And if they did embrace that part of China, they would very soon regret it. Um, Rad Rad Road, Roadbot says, do you have an insight on Bart Baker and another shills returning to America a couple of months ago? I don't have any insight. Oh, Bart Baker came back to America? 
It would make sense. Right now is not a good time. Oh, you wouldn't want to be a foreigner in China. You don't want to be one of those foreign idiots running around like, ooh. You don't don't want to be a foreigner in China right now. No, right now it's a bad idea. Xenophobia is. That's why we're seeing the, the last holdouts that are there are so hardcore trying to suck off the CCP. So hardcore. That they make those ridiculous fake posts using like stock footage, uh, stock photos, or they're full on tankies that are attacking the West with as much fervor as possible and being 100% uh, embraced by Chinese state media and stuff. Because those are the only ones that can survive right now. That's their survival mechanism. Completely embrace the CCP in every way, shape or form. And if you're not one of those types of people, if you can't, maybe somewhere in your soul, you have a little bit of good left and you realize that embracing this terrible authoritarian government with all the things it does is bad, you would leave, you know? Right. Uh, PB says, wouldn't put it past the CCP to create a propaganda campaign where the PLA had overrun Taiwan with fake mainlanders moving there and buying apartments, etc. Yeah, I suppose. Keo Williams says, Winston, please put your mic closer. It's closer. How about that? Uh, William Pacheco says, when will the PRC people get tired of CCP bullshit? Good to see uh, celebrities talking about Tibet, Hong Kong, Uyghurs, but Chinese people need self-determination themselves. Sure. It's tough. It's indoctrination from a young age. Yeah. Jay Hill 4221, please study Myanmar. CCP exploits resources, traffics women, finances separatists, um, a WA state army, takes... Uh, territory and much much more on a porous border we we're yeah. quite aware of that actually yeah. grumpy limey dollar store hodor says what great <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> these are getting meaner and meaner <laughs> doc slothington uh, silly super chats aside hyper partisan american politics in this chat and everywhere else feels like a distraction from the world's true threat the ccp thank you mm-hmm. for saying that that was my favorite super chat of today yeah simply for the content of it yeah um Y'all in the chat, like I look over there, a lot of you are really cool, but enough arguing about partisan politics in America. This is not what the show is about. Yeah, we, I mean, everybody can have their That's fine. political yeah, side. Yeah. But again, at the end of the day, we have to realize that we have to all band together against one great evil, which is the Communist Party of China. And it has to be one of those, the enemy of my enemy is my friend type thing. Um, and we have to look past each other's problems and, you know, you, you got to stop hating your neighbor because he's a lefty well, stop or a righty making, or whatever. Stop making artificial reasons for let's, you to hate someone. That's let's, just, just, let's just band together and realize that the biggest threat to the world right now actually is the CCP. Long-term yeah. threat, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, click All Night says, Happy Friday. Is the aversion to secondhand clothes about hygiene, pride, or fashion? It's definitely about pride. It's, it's more about, like, bad juju. Pride and superstition. It's superstition. And it's that's, too. That's why it's all about, you know, China, they believe in feng shui and all of this. It's very, especially down Flash south, it's very traditional. And that's why when someone buys an apartment, they won't just move in. They can't accept the other person's uh, decoration in there. They have to knock the floors out. All the tiles get taken out. The walls get taken down, all that. And fresh stuff gets put in. It's because you don't want to accept the previous owner's bad luck. That's basically what it is. I'm like, after we said that little disclaimer about the partisan thing, they doubled down. I mean, it's the same thing. Hmm. It's Never exactly, mind. no, just, yeah. I'm not trying to harp on about it, but you, you will lose ultimately to authoritarianism because inherently what you're doing is focusing on very, very minuscule, minute issues, mm. and they are not. Right, so yeah, that's yeah. that's the be all and end all of that. Yeah. Marit Strip Matter, Xi Jinping thought is obviously the pinnacle of human philosophical Every time achievement. you say Xi Jinping thought, thought, you it think sounds of like thought. thought. It's thought. Xi Jinping thought. Thought. You're just saying thought. Because I. It's I'm like not a sexy South Xi Africa. Jinping on on. on Why well, can't it be both? On Instagram or something. I've been to that. <laughs> well, like OnlyFans, Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping thought. <laughs> Only fans. Yeah, fans. Like Xi Jinping thought to, you know, sort of be. It's like, He's on yeah. his way to eclipse Mao as the bestest leader ever. Yep. Mm. PB, hey, when coal prices are burning a hole in your pocket, you might as well burn <laughs> your pants. <laughs> that's that's actually pretty good that's good but it's yeah. also sad yeah we, if we're talking about privately it's wicked sad what's no, happening terrible. with those rural nobody pays attention to the freaking rural people in china no they suffer so much no they certainly do we have a soft spot for them because we always ran into rural people on yeah our those trips. are the kindest best people in china to be honest. they had nothing to give you but the little they give you is so thoughtful yeah 
thought, thought for, as you would thought, say. Thought, thought, thought. I'm not it's South a thought African, experiment. Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure most of the world says thought. Are you in America or what? It doesn't matter. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure plenty of Americans say thought too. Just I like a lot of Americans can say mirror. They say mirror like me. <laughs> okay. Darth Hemi Merely says... pointing that out. <laughs> Australia owns China. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> Treat Theodore yeah, says, like, subscribe, share. Allow 86 Serpents of the Day. Great work, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much. Tree. Nice to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Plebeian Wisdom, move to China because of your vids. I'll never go back because you two also woke me up to the reality despite my good setup at a top university. Thanks for the inspiration and good times. Be safe. Yeah, th things, thank things you changed. very much. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. Jerry Huang, uh, I got, I got to say, the show. We, we had this, this conversation at some point a, a few years ago. We were still making very positive content about uh, China, as we had been doing for a long time. But they reached a point where we sat down and actually had a conversation. And we said, we, we are, what we're doing right now is irresponsible. OK, um, we cannot in good conscience continue to encourage people to come to China because of the change. Yeah, because of what, how it's been changing. We actually said that to each other. We said what we're doing is immoral. If you're going to go out there and say China's great, come and have we're having such a great time. Be just like us. Yeah, it's to a certain point in our careers. That was true. We mm -hmm. wanted people oh, yeah. to come. We yeah. love China. We thought it was amazing. We thought everybody should come and experience China and, and have the kind of adventures that we had. But it reached to a point where it changed so much that we knew that if we continued to put that message out, that we'd be doing a disservice to people. And so that's something I just want you guys to know. We had that conversation, and that was at the turning point where we decided to focus on showing you the pitfalls and the things you should watch out for and the reasons why you shouldn't come to China. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, Jerry Huang, friend of the show, says, I heard recently that CCP has made it a criminal act for any pro-independence of Hong Kong and Taiwan. It yes. was always a criminal act, but now it's a criminal act for Taiwanese people. Yeah. So what they're trying to do is prevent any pro-independence Taiwanese people, which is the majority of the country, by the way. It's um, kind of like you want to do business here. You're going to be in here China, in, yeah. in China. You better not be pro-Taiwan separatists. Right. Uh, you know, like independence, I should say. Lightseeker says, Peter Balsack blocked me on Twitter when I kept tweeting him Pinocchio <laughs> gifts. <laughs> you got his attention. Well, uh, we're not encouraging that, by that's, the way. That's hilarious. It's though. funny, but Pinocchio we're not encouraging gifts. We're not encouraging brigading. No, no, no. Shay. I just think that's freaking hilarious, though. <laughs> it's so apt. Yeah. Shays says, how do people in China talk about the party in private or among friends? I'm mostly apathetically. You yeah. will find criticism in private conversation. Yeah. Jordan Thomas, are iPhones as popular in China as they are in the West? Yes. More, more popular. More. Mm. Buy it more. <laughs> yeah. More at Strip Matter. Why are the most in, what are the most inspiring people in China that you know, both per, both personally and from history? The people that I know personally, I won't name. Yeah, you just can't. because I don't want to put a target on their back. Yeah. From history, I don't know. Sun Tzu, maybe. maybe Art of Sun War. Sun Tzu, hell yeah. yeah. I person, I, the Pirate Queen's awesome. That's yeah. a great one. Yeah. Uh, Germans like kitsch. They do. Do they? Yeah, they do. Oh, okay. They're so serious. Like porcelain dogs and stuff. They like porcelain dogs. I've seen that, you know? That's terrible. Yeah, and you know, like those, Sorry, Germany. those beer steins. They're really those cool. Those are, I like those. They're cool, but they're like little, little gnomes and stuff on them. Oh, that's, that's yeah. cool. It's oh, that's kinda, a that's kind of kitsch, dude. Yeah, I like fantasy the stuff. Just mein Glockenspiel or whatever, and they're right. bringing this stuff out. I love Germans, by the way. I got a lot of German sure. fans. Oktoberfest is my favorite time of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, I'm, yeah. I'm like. Kitsch, dude, kitsch. I'm a. Lederhosen, and, you know, like, cordies. That's culture. Yeah, but it's kind of kitsch. Fair enough. Feather in the uh, hat. I'm mostly German, and whenever I talk to German people, because like I am actually mostly German, and they don't actually care about that at all. They care more about like, do you speak German? Do you know? And I don't. <laughs> sure. And I don't. I mean, yeah. I do listen to Fichtel's lead every day. There though. we go. There's there's kitsch for you right there. If That's you, very kitsch. Das Fichtel or whatever that you're right. looking at all the time. This <laughs> Wonder Party. Yeah. Uh, Fichtel's lead. What is the song called? Uh, it's Fichtel's lead, lead it, yeah. but what are the Divudis? Yeah, that's the band. Divudis. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Dun, 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 Stop. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Sheminsky, tuning into you guys three times a week brings me back to the time of cable TV, a time that I, 27, never knew. Bo 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 go haram. Bo 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 go haram. Bo go haram. Big funny. Tech started supporting a new YouTube artist. I like YouTube artists, kind of like sandwich artist. Yeah. You know, like when you work at Subway, you're a sandwich artist. Yeah. No, I, you... I actually have a friend, and I kid you not, because 
I was catching up. It's one of those Facebook friends you haven't spoken to yeah. forever. And, yeah. and he's a good friend growing sure. up. Okay. So I was talking to him like, what do you do? He's like, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm working in, in food or whatever. I'm like, what? Do you, okay. Is he a food engineer? Cool. Culinary yeah. engineer? No, no. But the thing is, it turns out he works at Subway. So I said, oh. okay, so you, you're the guy who like, puts all the sandwiches together. He's like, we're actually called sandwich artists. Easy. And he said that unironically. And I was like, dude, okay, look, stop right there. I appreciate and I don't look down on anyone no, in the service industry. Of course not. If you're putting together a Subway sandwich that's uber fresh and delicious for someone, you're doing a very good not service. A sponsor. <laughs> but you do not call yourself a sandwich artist. See, I know they called themselves that internally, like corporate. I thought that people made fun of it. He actually embraced no, it. No, no, he was like, we're actually called. Does sandwich he watch the artist. show? Because now he's going to be mad. Maybe. But at the same time, it's on him because, you know, sorry, man sandwich artist yeah i can't i can't accept that i mean that implies that every sandwich like, has I, its own I, characteristics I, I honestly have got to the point where i'm almost accepting of the fact that you call some of the pours coffee a barista i can't deal with that but I it's just a that. coffee pouring person don't make fancy names sanitation engineer is like a plumber or, so, or like a i think it's a janitor a janitor so, you know what i mean it's like okay make yeah. what, what are you engineering it's kind of just like john t's like a reporter <laughs> You know, he certainly does a great job, you know, I feel I'm starting to feel bad for John. T. <laughs> I, I, think I mean, he, I do and I don't. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, he's probably a really nice guy. He probably is. He seems we'll have, like a, we'll nice have a beer guy. with him one of these days. We can all laugh it off. I mean, yeah. we make fun of stuff that we used to do. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, but if you geez, go, if you go if back gonna, on my YouTube library, if you're going to do that kind of stuff yeah, on TV, yeah. that's public, that's available that's, to the entire world. to see, Yeah, you it's have not to, like you have to just accept that that's what you've done and you deal with your consequences. It's not like we took someone's home video. And no, like, no, no, you no. Know no. I mean? It's not a secret. No. Yeah. Big Tech says, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, uh, turns out she's a fan of yours. Oh, cool. Shout out to Cinema Dilemma. Okay, cool. That's fantastic. Uh, Cin Cinema Dilemma. Um, is that I guess that's a YouTube channel. Okay, cool. I'm Thank trying you. to figure out I'm trying to find her so we can uh, subscribe and then we can say hey, what's up? Thanks for being a fan Sure, let me pop that in real quick cinema dilemma. There she is. I just subscribed to you cinema dilemma um, And she's got a movie channel. I guess I'm glad that she watches. Okay, uh, Aaron Young hmm. How self-sufficient are the impoverished poor Chinese? I mean, 100%. Very. They have to be because Very the government pragmatic. certainly doesn't help them out. No, there's no social programs. Yeah. Very little. Uh, incredibly self-sufficient, especially you go out into the mountains and the sort of very rural areas, you'll see they do everything. It's kind of like going back into medieval times to see the farming techniques and the way that they just survive. It's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, yes, you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, Brendan Callahan says, with so many only children, do you think that the Chinese people would tolerate the casualties of an invasion of Taiwan that would incur potential rebellion, not a factor? It would be tough. It's, it's tough that's... to sell a war to, you know, if, if people are losing their only sons, there's going to be hell to pay in China. That's the issue. That's really the issue, um, especially with like a whole generation of people with only single children. Yeah. Uh, DTQC says in Quebec, our PM just, de Prime Minister just declared that we should ask questions about our commercial relations with China if they do not have the same environmental regulations. Yes. That is a good step. That's great. Um, the next one is from uh, Zhang, Zhong Xina, yeah. which is uh, John Cena's new persona. It says, Zhao ADV, I can't do it in his accent. No. Sorry. Right. Um, so yeah, that's it's him like, talking I about. I have an ice cream. I love ice cream, and Fast and the Furious Nine is is better than ice yeah, cream. Better than ice cream, yeah. Uh, yeah. Marit Stripmatter says, "Wind of Change" by the Scorpions is better song for German unification. I yes. agree. I yes. agree. Aren't right they a there. foreign band? They're not American. They're, are they? I think they are. German. They're German, right? That makes sense. Scorpions. Are, I'm pretty sure they are German. Mm. Yeah. Could be wrong. The new ball sack is good, but the original is great. <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he wanted to use the ball sack. All of them. And then the original one. Yeah, so they're great. Yeah, but I already did. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it zoomed in. I, and I love how poor quality that report was. It's terrible. It's like, like we could put something better together right now, like in half an hour. It literally. Yeah. And that's top state media. I they know, should have crazy. they should have picked this up when we were vulnerable. Yes, yeah. You know? We could have been jaunty. We could have been a great jaunty. Mm. 
Uh, John Osborne sending good vibes to defeat the Wu Mao. Thank you. Donald, old enough to remember when President Carter recognized Communist China and not the Republic of China, the official China. It was a sad day. And, mm. of course, Richard Nixon, who, who did that. Yeah. Retro Georgie, uh, Andres Gracias, cotton is great to keep ball sack in Chinese manners. Okay, so, wait. Cotton is great to keep... To keep ball sack in... Okay. Oh, did I? You always forget great. Cotton is great. Great. There you go. Okay. Jeffrey Sneezos, I bet yeah. Jaunty wears cotton tidy whities to hold his Daz X. Oh, he does. Yeah, good old cotton tidy whities to hold his Daz <laughs> Okay. It's getting a bit personal. Yeah, yeah, let's continue. Ellie Munoz, can we get a ball sack for the gain of function researchers in the chat? Oh, yes, there we go. <laughs> we got There's it. There's a lot of those. I know a huge, if you go to Google and, or YouTube Analytics, you'll see America, Canada, gain of function researchers. <laughs> yes, definitely one of them. Definitely there. Mike Huter, good to see you, man. Thank you for your generosity, Mike. Uh, hey, guys, late to the show, but looking forward to the rewind. It's been great so far. Congrats, Winston, on the Trans Am. Hope you're going to vlog the drive. Yeah, yeah. you're going to go pick that up. Yeah, so Are you going to be here next week? Uh, Monday, my Trans Am, for those of you who don't know, my dream car, pretty much 78 Trans Am, has been in the shop for more than a year now. About a year, three months, year, four months. Finally yeah. ready to be picked up on Monday. Yeah, It's got some mechanical issues that have suddenly developed in the shop, like wiring issues and stuff. But I'm going to go there with all my tools. I'm going to go fix it up. And I'm going to try and drive it all the way back here. We'll see how far I get. I might have to get on the back of a truck if it breaks down. But uh, yeah, you know, it's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to make that trip, unfortunately. No, no, but I hope no. you film it. I'm going to film a whole bunch. I'll, I'll be posting pictures to my social media and stuff, at least of what it looks like uh, cool. once I get it. Can't wait. Awesome. Mm. Um, where are we at? Uh, Sherry Crosby says, I guess this one will pay for one wheel revolution of petrol money for Winston to retrieve his car, mm -hmm. but I'm living in lockdown since uh, August 17th. Drive on. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you so much. And yes, that thing, it's not great on mm -hmm. gas. I'll give you that much. What do you get for gas mileage on that car? Didn't We worked it out. It was like 11 and a half miles a gallon or something remember we did that thing <laughs> yes yeah what <laughs> what uh, um john sheena says may i be the chou dai which quite literally <laughs> means bag? you don't have a peter bag like a <laughs> like like a, a peter yeah like <laughs> right and then he says, uh, minus, uh, minus, says min minus e by xin yong, which yeah. means uh, like minus 100 social credit points. Okay. Um, Peter, Peter Bag, Bag is yeah. an interesting That thing. is an interesting thing. Oh, sorry. Iski says, hey, guys, hope you're well. Uh, getting close to opening tourism. Hope you're ready to fish Iga, fish Japan. Uh, Japan's, yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be fun. Um, yeah, at some point. Well, I'd like to make it back to Japan at some point, but, yeah. you know, it just doesn't know. Uh, Adu Su says, I'm, am I crazy planning to go to Taiwan for a working holiday visa with the current situation in China? Thanks no, for your... No, you're not no. crazy. Do it. Get get it. Go, go there. For it. You're not, Look, they're not getting invaded tomorrow. Don't worry. Yeah, just uh, do it. You're going to have a wonderful time. Winston, Logo App says, Winston, do you know why Freedom House has given South Africa a high rating? And I trust Freedom House, actually. It's because of the metrics. Mm. It, freedom freedom of, of government doesn't mean safe. No, yeah. I mean, you look, know. freedom of still press. Freedom of you, can, you, you can still say what you want in the media. You can still yeah. do all that. So that from that point of view, yes. But you're There's just safety gonna, ratings. You're just going to die by walking on the street, though. So it's not safe. No. It's free, but not safe. You're Correct. free to die in many ways Correct. very easily under many different circumstances. Remrunner says, have you guys noticed the recent proliferation of almost authentic Chinese restaurants in the U.S.? Not here in Pennsylvania. Even my crap New Jersey town has, oh, hot pot. So yeah, we have yeah. a couple hot pot restaurants. I was very confused about that because if you go back like five years, there's absolutely nothing like that. Yeah. So definitely a lot more Chinese immigrants. I mean, when we were in California, obviously there were whole areas. Oh, yeah, that's not what I'm areas. talking about. I'm yeah. talking about these small towns. On the yeah. East Coast, I never saw stuff like this here. I was so impressed. You know, we did that quest for the best uh, Chinese in the USA. Remember, we actually did that road trip to find yeah. of Chinese yeah. restaurants. You know, even before that, when I came on that 2016 trip, a couple of the places that I stopped, I remember one in Atlanta, Georgia specifically, that was really good. It was a Sichuan restaurant. It was just as good, if not better than uh, a lot Chinese. of a lot of the authentic yeah. American, not American Chinese food, yeah. American China based Chinese restaurants are better yeah. than ones in China simply because of the ingredient quality. Yeah, exactly. And quality control. I, it's the same, I, same I got to say, I've been impressed. I yeah. I eat Chinese food all the time. Mm. What we usually do is cook it at home, though. Mm. Uh, but three Koreans says Chinese Canadian here. Anyone looking forward to Canada versus China Olympic hockey match if they implement a mercy rule? 
I'm sure a lot of you out there are. <laughs> yeah. Alphabet. Yeah, they so, tried to kick the Chinese men's. Uh, I did hear game, that. Yeah. Uh, hockey, ice hockey out, and it, it's not because of anything other than the fact that they sucked so bad. Was it? They, they have lost all game. They got they worse than everyone else. But it's they so they weren't going to allow them to play because they suck so bad. I actually know someone that played on the the uh, Harbin hockey team. Yeah, well, then yeah. you probably know why they suck so bad then. The guy probably couldn't even skate. I don't know. Why are they so bad? No, he was American. He's a white oh, American. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, they suck bad. But, of course, since Beijing's the host country, they kind of walk back on that. And they're like, oh, we'll let you play. It's your country, I guess. You know? Yeah. Being too nice. Alphabet says, uh, seems like the CCP party men that have a lot of men conduct themselves. Leventy Beria. What is that? I have no idea. I'm too dumb to know what that means. Seth Ball says, let me show you Chinese manners. Love okay. you guys. Keep it up. Give oh. some love to Chinese manners. Okay. Let me show you no, that one gets the least love. What is it? That the flavor word. <laughs> what? The flavor. It's the fragrance we're blessing. blessing. We show our affection. Yeah. We got to say. Let me show, show you Chinese, Chinese manners. It's the fragrance we bless him. We show our affection. Song. That's what it is. Yeah. Return to orc monk monkey. Carbon dioxide and oud or something like that. What was the uh, necrophilosis? <laughs> <laughs> Satisfied <Kidneys>. Popeye. <laughs> we got to play that one again for you guys. It's still actually that's absolutely my that's the best. It's there my is favorite. No, no, it's so ridiculous. Yeah. Necrophilosis. Yeah. Necrophilosis. And larch yeah, rolling large. miles to see a satisfied, satisfied Popeye. Popeye. Yeah. That's a lyric. It's a lyric. And Can't it's wait. serious. Can't wait to play that again. Return to. Or, orc, orc monke. Yeah. I don't know what makes me laugh more. Y'all's hilarious sound bites are the impish laughter that follows them. What a great podcast. <laughs> great. <laughs> I can't get oh, man. I can't get Every time I that. see it, that guy reminds me of someone I know as well. I just love this. Yeah. Like the downwards. It's like the most unenthusiastic <laughs> great. It also doesn't make sense in response yeah. to what she was saying. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, comment account. The great reporter spoke in an American accent when singing, but a British one when reporting. Oh, that's true. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's did. right. I think that's quite normal. They dub over that stuff and all that. Yeah. Uh, A. Watson says, you both look great with great. your smile. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for making fun of that guy's teeth, but I feel like don't make that such a prominent thing. No, if, if it's you about haven't... smiles, you better make sure you've got... Such a sterile, pristine looking music video. I know. I know. Uh, Esther Santos says, "You guys, is it true that China can you can kill your partner if they tr cheat on you?" No. no. Just thought of it because Balsack move against the CCP agent did. What? Oh, it's, what? Oh, because of the Balsack move, the CCP agent did. I get yeah. it. Yeah. No. Um, Nathan eighty seven says, "Any plans to reveal the Balsack clip source over my dead body?" Don't worry. We own we, the source. Yeah, we have we have the original like demo VHS how, for it. How obscure is this podcast that we have the Hollywood demo tape yeah. from 1990 yeah. for the original source of the ball set. Yeah, exactly. That well, we have encoded. We will, uh, yeah. we will encode. I'm, I'm working on a, a way to like capture it better. Yeah. We'll make a super like, I don't know, a high definition release of the, the ball sack thing eventually. Um, Lola Farley's in here. Nice. What's up, my man? Lila Farley, friend of the show. Go uh, subscribe to his channel if you want more China content. I can safely say one of the only other China uh, channels I would endorse. And uh, absolutely, and his yeah. Chinese is impeccable. Oh yeah, he's, he's, and definitely go there if incredible. you like. If you like us pissing ourselves laughing over really dumb shit. Yeah. His stuff is like highbrow comedy. Yeah, he's actually a comedian. It's good shit. And he's hanging around with Ines. Um, oh yeah, he know, met uh, Ines. Uh, is it Ines or Ines? Ines? I, I don't know. Uh, and his cancer, you know the the badass uh, the Dazix on that guy. Yeah, exactly the um, the NBA player that stood up to the CCP. He's yeah. he was hanging out with him the other day. Yeah, exactly. Very cool stuff. Yep. Um, Chuck Tilly says, speaking of cotton, have you seen the price of cotton lately? Oh yeah. <laughs> Is it though? I don't know. <laughs> Um, Darth Hemi says, "F Tim Pool." Okay. Uh, A Watson says he's a new member. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. This is like really. Yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of comments today. We're gonna have to really whip through here. Let's Stephen do it. White, love you guys. Important issues. Uh, can I get a great Peter Balsack? Oh, you certainly can. Great. Uh, Peter Peter <laughs> Balsack loves cotton and has great Chinese manners. Oh man! Wow. Okay. He's, just, he's like learning how to code. Loves what is he? he loves Peter. Uh, he has great Chinese manners. Great. Let me 
Uh, my profile picture is from Team Fortress 2 animation. Sorry, that's not my, okay. not my relative that made that. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting for Taiwan to open uh, for my working holiday visa, but I worry about this current situation. Oh, we just answered that. Yoder, uh, where are we on the Serpent Zade versus Chris Abroad boxing match? Is that, what, is that I've never heard of that. From Abroad in Japan, you're going to fight him? No, I've Maybe never Maybe they brought it up on his show. Him. Oh, no. one of my friends knows him. Oh, okay. Seems like a nice Seems guy. cool. I like yeah. him, yeah. Santee, Serpents Today and the Weeb Within. PSA, giant, great cotton can be found in the USA. Like this? Great. Cotton. You guys are going to wear these yeah, he's just, things he, out. We got to yeah. use them sparingly. I mean. Daniel Jacobs. I mean, if they're paying, they get they get a, yeah, they get a bite. Yeah, that's true. Rum Runner. I guess Chinese Caribbean pirate would speak with a northern Chinese accent. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a classic Laowai joke. Mm -hmm. uh, Novus, tell me you're not fresh off the boat, foreigner in China. If they uh, tell me, I don't know how I'm setting this up. Just okay. don't listen to him. <laughs> what are you right even talking about? No, I was going to say every foreigner that comes to China says, oh, up in Beijing, they sound like pirates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not yeah. making fun R, of you. R. That is, you are, that means you are kind of indoctrinated into the whole China that's culture good, that's thing. Good. Nova Star, Taiwanese Joseph Wu just visited our corner of the world, the Philippines. I was thinking about applying for a doctorate in Taiwan. Is that the Philippines? I don't want to screw this up. It might actually be the Czech Republic. Son of a, don't 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 <laughs> you, yeah, don't yeah. say that. I accidentally. Check, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Czech Republic. Yeah. So they came to Czechia. Yeah, I was thinking about applying for a doctorate in Taiwan, but I want to visit first. But COVID COVID ban travels. And that sucks. Yeah, me. you. I mean, you should always visit a place before you just go live there. If you yeah, have I would. If you have the choice, shot. I mean, I could recommend it either yeah, way. But you should definitely great. check it out. Yeah. Et uh, eight eighty eight says, "Isn't there any NGO support to help shills out of their misery? It's so cringe that it hurts." Make uncomfortable great ever. Most great. great. Yeah. That is the most uncomfortable great. John Doe, would you all talk about the kafala system if you visit Dubai? I don't know what that is. No idea. We'll have to look into uh, it. Funatsu96. Good morning. New fan here. I got you guys in my YouTube recommendation due to a debacle about Billy Billy censorship and VTubers. Ah, cool. Please say the name Kiryu Koko to make some section of the Wumao Mad. Kiryu Koko. Yeah, Kiryu Koko. And yeah, we did that whole thing about VTubers, remember? We did. So that's how they found us. That's that awesome. We had centipede tail thing that was, that was bizarre. Making me real uncomfortable. Mm. Um, yeah, James. Yeah, so uncomfortably went out and bought that body pillow. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> what? <clears throat> I'm not into waifus. I'm pretty sure I'm a brony. Yeah, that's true. And you're a furry. Remember? <laughs> Remember what we are. <laughs> okay. Uh, James, hi from the Great White North. Hope you can get up here and ride for the next year in the next year or two. The Ice mm -hmm. Fields Parkway is a Canadian Rockies is an incredible ride drive. Donald, Nick is not far right and said support China's sarcasm. Sounds like someone someone's trying to run defense. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I read in the chat. Anyway. Uh, Shaner the Gray, uh, there has been surprising amount of genocide denial coming out of some YouTube uh, political commentators on YouTube. What's one simple surefire point of evidence to shut down their argument? Thanks. Um, if they don't believe there's any sort of bad thing happening in Xinjiang, then why are the Uyghurs saying that there is and their families are being ripped apart and they can't communicate with their families anymore? Yeah. They're not lying. Also, remember, China denied the existence of these camps in the first place. And then, okay? and then after huge them. amounts of like pressure from people revealing things, finally, they're like, oh, yeah, actually, they do exist, but they're just vocational. You really, I mean, to, if you're in China and you saw how dehumanized Uyghurs are to begin with, and mm -hmm. then you find the government documents that say they need to be reeducated the, by the millions. And they are being reeducated. And they are. Here, that's, there's no we, denial We actually there. had this exact, exact same conversation on an interview the other day. We did an interview with yeah. another podcast. Here's the thing. People keep saying, they keep saying like, oh, this Adrian Zenz guy is wrong and he's trying to like um, generate, what is it, uh, consent for war or something, like try to generate some kind of outrage and stuff. It's not about that, guys. When we talk about the genocide in Xinjiang, we're talking about a cultural genocide, okay? We're not talking about people being taken outside and shot in the back of the head, okay? We're talking about people having their religion, their culture, everything stripped away from them. And it's exactly the same as going on a Navajo reservation here in the states now modern day 2021 you go on the navajo reservation you say from now on none of you are allowed to speak navajo anymore you're not allowed to follow any of your traditions you're not allowed to wear your traditional clothing you're not allowed to um do your traditional dances you're not allowed to do anything traditional you must convert to christianity you must speak english only all of your language textbooks your history everything now is not allowed to be practiced if we catch you practicing that we're putting you in concentration camps all the men Put them in the concentration camps 
We're going to bring Christian guys in to marry all the women, to make sure or live with the women together, to dilute this. That's what's happening in Xinjiang. Okay, so there is so much, so many bad things. And those are the things that are publicly admitted by China. You can actually see China showing this is what we're doing. Okay, it's straightforward. They are doing that. That's not being hidden. The stuff that's being hidden is even more terrible. Okay, the forced labor, the, the mass rape, all the other crap that we know is going on there, but we just don't see. So even the stuff that we can see is so terrible and it should be against any kind of Western sensibility. Just like what I said with the, the Navajo reservations, you can use that argument because that's what they're doing. And then you can ask the people that are, you know, doing genocide denial if they think that that's OK. I mean, it's it boils down to all that. Uh, by the way, that was a great explanation. Just wanted oh, to thanks. give you a little applause. Sorry, my back's turned to you because I read no, these it's fine. No, thanks. damn questions. I appreciate um, it. What I wanted to say was uh, it really boils down to we've spoken to Uyghurs and it's just how it is. Yeah. It's just how it is. I mean, it, either you trust people or you don't, and I would trust these people. And wh what would be the motivation for so many people to be... Yeah, um, especially when we're not even talking to activists. Like people, I know one of my best friends up in Inner Mongolia. I've talked to him in private. Yeah. Just saying, I'm not going to say who it is. Yeah. Uh, Sam M., can you just explain why the U.S. Not, now does not recognize Taiwan as a country? Because that would break the one China policy, which would allow them China legally to invade Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, Josh Ortiz, uh, Josh is actually my friend. Cool. Uh, up early. So I actually got to you, catch, catch you guys live. Thank How you. are you doing in Taiwan, my man? I, I miss you. Uh, Roman Reyes, I have a particular prediction that perhaps china may experience a finnish soviet war or vietnam war because of the yes men and overconfidence hopefully not mm -hmm. jordan thomas michael malice is a great podcaster and expert on north korea he did a podcast with yemi park the three of you would have a great conversation thanks for the suggestion mm -hmm. Fly if you want us to go on a podcast you read help us reach out to those people yeah exactly flying cloud thank you very much donald trying to discuss the spread of the virus with my son-in-law he kept referring to ball sack <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> This is good. What have we done? It's good. People got to know him for who he is and what he is. Now, now hopefully he's sweating, you know, <laughs> sweaty ball sack. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, Ellie Munoz says, outrage culture has been monetized. Isn't that great? <laughs> oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting tripped up with the great. Yeah. I keep forgetting about it. It's so new. Yeah. K Booty, one of the wisest things I've ever heard from a Bosnian contractor doing some work for me. He said, politics is bitch. <laughs> I can't say it better myself. Yeah. Bitch. Chan yeah. Wayne, I was at, just at a dollar store in a mess shirt. Oh, no. <laughs> Why? Don't do it. Free speech respecter says, I agree with Donald. Nick is a Dazak buster. He's just kidding about China. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who this guy is. So. Yeah. William Pacheco, by the way, you guys, I only said F U to him. Someone's going to clip that out and be like, look at what he said. I don't know who this person is. Nick Fuentes? Fuentes. Oh, Fuentes. If you cut me out and show that to him, I'm going to feel bad because I don't, actually don't know who it is. What my response is when I say fuck you is if you're chiding China on saying that they're anti-woke and then that they should be congratulated for that, that's an F you moment. Yeah, yeah. That's that's wrong. You have to understand what's going on in China. you got to understand China. you got to understand China, really. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, you guys are awesome from William. He says, thanks for the work, bringing more insight to the CCP in China. Glad I caught you live today. Rumrunner says, new term for Wu Mao is Xi Jinping thoughts. Yes. Xandros999, Patrick Day, thank you. Dustin yeah. D, would love to see a guest segment with Sasha and Vivi. Probably not going to happen. Yeah, we try to keep them out of our videos. I'm sure you noticed recently, and that's simply because of all the vile attacks by the nationalists. Not only the These nationalists. The tankies, too. The tankies and the, 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 the shills. foreign the shills. shills go after they, our wives all the they, time. They say the most horrific things about our yeah. wives, and it's so weird because it goes against their whole, like, they I'm a to socialist speak on to like, of our wives, you know? Yeah, like I'm so woke about everything and you don't deserve to be married to these guys. What the fuck off, dude? Yeah, exactly. So we're not going to involve them. Yeah, you, exactly. You, mm -hmm. you ruined it for everyone, Shills. Yeah. Ellie Minot's Oktoberfest is great. We went to 92 Mun uh, Mun Munich, ball sack. <laughs> uh, Clara, thank you very much. 69123, thank you for all you do. I'm from a Canadian. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Emmy says, former sandwich artist here. Yeah. I cannot recall the number of disgusting triple mayo meatball and tuna sandwiches. I made art. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I believe you. I mean, thank you for being upfront about that. I like yeah. having this insider opinion. Absolutely. This is some serious intelligence. Like, a job is a job, and yeah. everyone deserves respect no matter what they do for their job. Um, but, you know, you got to call it what it is. You know? Dude, 
Paul Sacquitoli to triple mayo meatball <laughs> and tuna sandwich. He, this, the new one. This <laughs> this era of ball sack would yeah. eat that on a daily basis. Oh, dude. He probably doubled down and ate some of those. What is it, Elvis? They used to eat like a whole freaking loaf of bread with an entire peanut butter jar and jelly yeah, jar. Yeah, That's, that's so the weird. new ball sack. He used to eat that. Yep. I'm sure in Minecraft. K Booty mm-hmm. says, Oh, I'm wearing my fat little chicken shirt as I watch the stream. What your shirt actually means is fat little penis. Yes. Um, it's supposed to say fat chicks, but Google Translate sucks. <laughs> yes. This guy, he he tried to get a, a Chinese shirt made because mm-hmm. he's inspired by our bad tattoo episode. Yeah. And he says fat chicks, but he used Google Translate. And you don't say chick for a woman no. in, in China. It doesn't no. make any sense. No, no. So what it actually says is fat little penis. Yeah. It's a xiao, no, it was like it pang, pang xiao pang xiao ji. Ji. Yeah. Xiao G is a, a slang term slang. for uh, for penis. So he is now wearing a shirt. This is fat so, little yeah, little penis, which is even worse. If you walk around in Chinatown or something with that on, you'll get some stares. Yeah, could be quite funny. Stairs. Could be yeah. quite funny. Props yeah. to you for for accepting it and <laughs> flaunting it. <laughs> Quinn F. It came to me. It just came to me that the CCP is kind of like a dance of eternity in a weird way. They choose a beat to stay on. They change time signatures a lot. A big stretch. I know. No, I like that. I like that. I like yeah. musical theory. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, Vafn three E, Chan Wayne. Thank you very much. Uh, Donald Warren, can you call Marfugal News one time and give some insight on Chan's? I have no idea what <laughs> any of that is. I think he's maybe taking the piss about all these name drops people do, oh, which maybe. I would appreciate. Like that's funny, because I don't know. It's no, a real. It's a, real, it's a thing. real thing. Never mind. I've I have no idea. What no that idea. Is. I apologize. Um, better. With rum says tow truck money for Winston. Good luck. Thank I'm you. Pretty sure you're not gonna do that trip. We're gonna find out. We'll see. Pretty sure you should just probably ship it. You should go. I make sure it's it, okay. It's, apparently, not, apparently it's not starting. And it's not starting. Wiring things. So I have to. Colin Shot, you guys frequently talk about the low quality of Chinese goods. Do you have a sense of how this trend affects their quality of military products? It's probably a bit of higher standard. Of, oh, yeah, right? definitely. It's a different standard. It's just like in China, the export um, quality stuff is better than the local. So it'll actually say like Chuko quality, basically. So you can get the export quality Qingdao beer or you can just drink the local stuff <laughs> and the export quality is better. It's way better. Yeah, uh, Gavodin. China says, can make great quality stuff. Oh yeah, the skill base is there. It's just there are too many shortcuts made to turn a profit uh, when it comes to like pumping crap out for you know the West to put in their Christmas stockings and stuff. Uh, go to uh, Gavodin says come up to Toronto. Here's some IPA money for you guys. I used to go to Toronto all the time. Thank you. Mm. Uh, Donald history bet here. And Nixon went to China in 1972. The U.S. did not recognize Red China until 1979. Carter was president. Right, but it started with the Nixon administration. It was a huge fuck up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maritz Strip Matter, just some appreciation. Keep it up. Thanks, Maritz. Thank we you. love you. Rock M, they're not getting invaded tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Why are you quoting me on this? They're <laughs> not. They're, they're not. Mark my words. Let's Taiwan see. will not be invaded tomorrow. Dory, Dory Y, watch, they'll just do it to spite me. Yeah. CCP, if you're watching this, you better not. Yeah, don't Taiwan. do it tomorrow. Don't do it ever. No. Uh, Dory, why? Can we do something similar for Tedros? Yes, Ed, just like Bolsak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we should. Because Tedros is really bad. Okay. I mean, yes. I mean, yes. Bolsak yeah. is like the real, the real reason, though, mm. that the corruption from Tedros happened. Yes. You understand? So it stems from the sack. Yeah. Yeah, you know, totally. maybe he would be the shaft or the <laughs> maybe the Enough. foreskin. Yeah. He says a bit of a dick, but whatever. Yeah. Let's, let's a bit of a on. dick. Yeah, exactly. Let's move that on. That should have been removed <laughs> from the head head position of the WHO. Tell me that's not a yeah, coincidence. Okay, let's let's move on, shall we? It's getting a bit graphic. <sighs> Say what you want. Mm-hmm. I will. Um <laughs> he says, Can I get the source? I can get the source of Balsack by screenshot and reverse the image, and then if you take, good luck. Go for it. I dare you. You yeah. cannot. Yeah. Good luck. Um, Lola Farley agreed with me and said Tedros is the foreskin. By the <laughs> okay, way, so good. thank you, Lola. Appreciate right. you being on Team Sea Milk. Mm-hmm. Uh, Laura Talbot, uh, Vafan Kulo, three E, cotton noun, a soft white fiber substance. Mm, yeah. David Brooks. Feel sorry for a shill, the younger son of another shill. Mm-hmm. He can do better than to support the CCP. He's still young. He does. He seems like he kind of got wrapped up in this. The thing is, we give him the benefit of the doubt, do. but he knows exactly what he's doing. So True. I mean, he's an adult, but yeah. at the same time, it's kind of shitty when your dad ropes you into some Ponzi scheme. Everyone looks up to their dad, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he shouldn't look up to his dad, though. No. 
Phono, uh, logo app, C Milk, thoughts on Final Fantasy 15? I absolutely loved it. It was amazing. It took me a while to finish because I got hung up on a part and I left it for a year. Came back to it. So glad I did. It's like a road trip in a game. Amazing. Mm. Uh, if you go back to China one day, are you dead? They won't let us there. Or if they do, they'll kill us mm. or they won't let us out. Are nope, the families yeah. of your wife safe there? Maybe, maybe not. Is it hard to live after in the USA after 10 years in China? Mm. Not so much now. No. There's a lot of reverse culture shock, though. No, it's uh, it's very easy to live in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, if if you go difficulty level, China's like an eight out of ten. America's like a two. Yeah, uh, t- even if that. If that. Tyler Donaghy says, "Just found you guys this week. Love the content. If you guys make it out to New York City, uh, you should do a meetup. We were not we're there not that long ago. Yeah, we can we can drive down Chinatown and Flushing." Queens rocks. Flushing is literally like being in China. You kind of don't even have to go to China if you go to Flushing. Right. Uh, Blazing Whirlwind. Show us your pony collection, Matt. And who is the best pony? This guy looks like a brony. Um, just a sec. Do you know the ponies' names? You you've got the Twilight Sparkle body pillow. Is that the name of it? <laughs> My little pony ponies. I don't know their names. Hold on. Uh, I, mean, I totally know their. I totally know their names. Uh, Rarity, Twilight Sparkle, Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash, Applejack. I like Applejack. Sounds good to me. It's like the most manly one. I think. Oh, is it? If, yeah. Oh, that's. I'm a man. Mm. Last I checked. Last I checked, I had my Tedros and my Dazex. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm, I'm just. What are you trying to say? Nothing. I mean, that's your favorite. That's your body pillow. Don't make me get your fursona in here. <laughs> no, it's right out in the hallway. <laughs> Enough. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, Lala Farley says the CCP is the Galactic Empire, and we are the Rebellion. Yes. There's no time for internal beef. Emperor Pooh is the enemy. I'll be Han Solo. And agree. Okay. And thank you for making that. And I, I love Lala Farley for that analogy. I think Star Wars is such a good analogy. Yes. We are the Republic. And everyone is in the Republic, including Chinese people. Yeah. The CCP is the empire, and it's so much that. Yeah. Is it not? Yeah. They suppress their own people. Yeah. <sighs> Siths, all of a lot of them. Yep. Uh, 69123, thank you very much. Black Halo 6, anyone who denies, any person who denies the genocide, defends it, or doesn't acknowledge it is complicit. Yes. Is just as guilty, and you should be held to account. And I agree with you, Black 100%, Halo 6. 100%, you know, if, I mean... With what's going on, you you have to at least acknowledge the fact that it could exist, not yeah. deny it. No. You know, that's the thing. If you're outwardly denying it, you are running defense on behalf of the CCP, and it's just not okay. I'm confirmed brony because I picked Applejack. I did have to Google it. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, think what you want. Uh, <laughs> cultural genocide does have a name. It's ethnocide, just an FYI for better communication. But there's also forced sterilization, which is real genocide. Yes. Uh, Marit Strip Matter, good night and good luck. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Chippicus S. Chippicus, where have you been? Yeah. I haven't seen Chippicus in like six billion years. Um, I'll let Mike Malice know, lol. Who's Mike Malice again? I can't remember. I feel bad. I don't want to say like, oh, we don't even know these people. I don't want to be like that. Oh, yeah, the, the North Korea dude or something. Oh, that North Korea podcaster. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool. Thanks. Uh, a. Watson, my kids enjoy, and I, my kids know I enjoy your Friday show. When watching Law I-86 this week, my eight-year-old leans over and says, where's the other guy? Because <laughs> the podcast, which I agree, I think is their best content. Yeah, we enjoy it the most, especially being able to interact with all you guys out it's there. A, it's amazing. It's so yeah. fun. Black Halo 6. I mean, who knew fighting communism could be this entertaining? Yeah, sure, you know sure. A lot of the other stuff out there is pretty dry. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Black Halo 6. Forced abortion and sterilization against a group of population control is genocide. Thank you very mm-hmm. much. Yeah. Don't sugarcoat it. That's what they want. And I agree with you, Black Halo 6. And yes. I will take your side on that argument. I, honestly, just playing devil's advocate, you have to understand that people are... There's this trend going along where people are trying to deny this as being a genocide. So you have to approach it from different angles because people have to see it for what it is. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne B says, thank you for keeping us well informed. I trust your knowledge and research. Thank you. Grumpy Marine says, Goose Island IPA rocks. Give it a try. Okay. Logo app says, couldn't agree more. Final Fantasy 15 is my favorite. I'm so proud of my cousin for designing your avatar. <laughs> Chan Wayne. Um, yeah. What the hell? YouTube, fix your shit. There it is. Have you considered making a bunch of random videos just to confuse the algorithm? In what Why way? would you do that? What do you mean? Mm. Jennifer, uh, Vafankulo is an Italian swear yes. word. Oops. Yes, it is. You know it? Yeah. Since when are you an Italian? No, South Africa's got a huge melting pot. My Most guys would say that, you know, they do this when they say it as well. Really? Yeah. And well, something like cuisine. This. Some crap like this. 
I used to do that. I don't know why. I give you a three out of five Mata Owens. Even a black dude in my school used to say that all the time, which is interesting. very interesting because it's Italian. Maybe he was an Italian black guy. Remember there was a, what it, what colony did Italy have in, in Africa? Remember? No idea. There was a, I was Tunisia. They weren't black. Okay, no. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that guy always used to say that. Bavankula, then you say Noga, all this other, like, you know, this Japanese, no, what am I saying, Japanese, just Zulu insults you'd say all the time. Take it easy, Paisa. Yeah, yeah, no, he'd really have all these, like, Zulu Still insults. He's quite, quite a hilarious guy, and he was singing the song once, and, you know, my Zulu's not great. It keeps flashing and people in my shirt, I apologize. Doing that, yeah. So anyway, he's singing the song, and it's this, like, very in-depth song. Um, and I can pick up a couple words here and there, and he's singing this song, and so, so what, what is that song about? And he says... The song is saying, if you look at my woman, I kill you. Mm. And that was it. That There's was a like, lot of songs there about that. But that was like the translation for That was like a long it thing. It was a super long song. And that was literally, the, that, that was his translation for right. it. Right. What is that language like? It's some, uh, what is it? Native Alaskan. You know those natives up, up mm-hmm. there? I think their words are like massively long to describe something. Like I mean, blueberry pie in like uh, Indian language or Native American language, I think is like this long. They probably talk about all the It describes everything, yeah. yeah. It's kind of cool. I love I love different languages. It's always fascinating. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, why is everyone saying Eritrea? Er- 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 oh yes, yeah, it wasn't er- Somalia. Er- what was? I'm pretty good at geography, but I forgot my Italian colonies. Good for um, you, Jordan. Ta- it's probably great pizza there, wherever it is. What? <laughs> it's like you know. It's like and cool, you know whatever. Stop. This that's rude. <laughs> what is that stuff? Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Let's continue. Jordan Thomas. Fun fact: Mike Tyson has a Mao tattoo. We do know that. Yeah, that's funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, Black Halo Six. Why does Winston the Furry know more about MLP? Lol. What is My Little Pony? Mm-hmm. Because Winston actually is the source of all of my information <laughs> regarding weird shit. Like I know some weird shit. He knows some weird shit because he used to have the yeah. anime club. Yeah, yeah. So he'd he'd tend the flock. Uh, He's very like a uh, inclusive person. Yeah, I know a lot of people. And in South Africa, I ran a um, the first ever Japanese pop culture sort of uh, thing. I started a magazine actually with some friends, which was a proper magazine, not like a out of your backyard garage type of magazine. A real one that was in the proper shops and everything. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. had a big readership. It was called Otaku Magazine, and so. I, I love subcultures. I really love subcultures. I think they're fascinating. And I used to, before I started the magazine, I started this screening company where I'd rent out like a school hall with a projector and I'd source VHS tapes and various things from people uh, from Japan. We'd watch Japanese movies uh, and not just anime and stuff like, you know, live action movies and things. And it would be things you could never find in South Africa. And it drew a certain kind of crowd. You know, the kind of people that are looking for that sort of thing are out of the ordinary in South Africa. It's not your average person because in South Africa, the mainstream are all sort of alpha males, you know, go watch the rugby and, you know, drink beer and, you know, have very little of of importance to say really most of the time. Bunch of bro jogans running around. Yeah, pretty much. But like less intelligent, you know? Right. Okay. Trying to fight each other all the time, whatever. So, you know, there was this really weird mix of people that used to come together. And that's how I started to learn about all these weird and wonderful subcultures and things like that. And, uh, you know, yeah. I, no, I, I'm interested in this stuff too. I got to say, man, some of my favorite peeps in the world are yeah. this, the, the strange, sure. the, misfits. Fringe, the, the fringe. I agree. I know? think it's really, yeah. So, we're both pretty inclusive people, but used to help wrangle them and find sure. friends. It was nice sure. of you. No, it was great fun. Uh, by the way, the Italian uh, Empire was Libya, Eritrea, and the eastern part of Somalia, and briefly, briefly Ethiopia. Yeah, see, that's too far north for me. Yeah. Uh, David Brooks says, no, not my Final Fantasy 15. What's wrong with you? He's thinking about 13. Uh, he pr- better be. <laughs> yeah. That one sucked. John Wayne says, I always played the Empire in Star Wars games. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Should I? What is? Who did this? Uh, oh, yeah, the rock. The stone. Or, yeah. The stone. <laughs> <It's continued. laughs> Not a shit hole. Yeah, yeah. That uh, is his Chinese name, the shit hole. Is it? I'm pretty sure it's the shit hole. Wow. Yeah. Which means stone. that that stone over there. Yeah. Um, David Brooks says, "Has China in focus or China uncensored approach?" You guys did two video interviews. We did. We did two interview. Three, four four interviews with China Uncensored? Yeah. Like, and yeah. yes, we've been approached. We're not affiliated with uh, their news network or whatever. We've done interviews on their podcast. Yeah, on the like. China Unscripted podcast. Yeah. And I did I did a video with him on his own channel too. Yeah. Um, Black Halo 6. Yes, yes, they've done interviews. Jeez, lol. <laughs> Chan Wayne says, confuse the algorithm so more people see your channel. Controversial uh, topics are less likely to be shared with people who do not search saying. for it. Well, if we put out something like, like 
learn your colors with ABC, and it's like two D ta, a two D ta. If we did something like that, we wouldn't rank because we don't make that yeah. kind of content. Yeah. So you can't just make popular videos that are YouTube's just separate. a funny game. We're yeah. just very grateful to have have all of you here as our audience. We yes. seriously appreciate it. Someone is a saint. Oh, wow. Mimi says you got to understand China ADV podcast episode five one twenty six. Okay. So now we know where yeah, we'll to cut it, it out of. Yeah. I just did. Cool. Uh, Darth Hemi says double hearted ale by Bells is good. Okay. Uh, Winston, can you explain Futaba? If you're talking about Persona Five Futaba, maybe. Uh, David Brooks says, have you watched the movie Shadows in China? Shadows of China with John Lone. If not, mm-hmm. Shrek the Crusader. Uh, Serpent's Day. Did you did you miss load shedding? A fellow Soti with no power and too much free time on his Yeah, it's crazy. Like I said, my parents keep telling me how often the power goes off now. Um, It's been going off like all the time. Load shedding, if you don't know, in South Africa, the government doesn't know how to run the infrastructure there and they screwed it all up and it's all burnt down. The power stations and stuff cannot make enough power. So they have to do load shedding. So basically, can you imagine your your day? You're doing your day and then suddenly you get a, a notification. Your power is going to go off for probably the next three hours, and then it goes off for about three hours, two and a half hours. Comes back on later, and then later it goes off again. Goes off in, at night. Sounds sometimes like a, in the sounds day. fun. It's terrible, so they can spread the power around because there's not enough to go around. So people's losing power every day, almost on a weekly basis. I had a anyway. bit of that in China. It's but this is ridiculous. Like you try to do business, you try to run a company, you try to do anything when you can't have power. Yeah, it's it's impossible. Yeah, everyone has to use generators and crap like that. That's when you know you're in a developing country. Paul Craig says, one of Winston's favorite Japanese live action films, please. Azumi. Okay. If you just want some kind of like really ridiculous over the top. I'm pretty sure actually your favorite one is that one where um, worms come out of the toilet and go into people's assholes and turn them into like, remember that one? What's that one? I can't remember that (laughs) one. We watched it at my house. (laughs) I can't even remember. Oh, that? Yeah, I can't (laughs) even remember what that was. I don't remember. It's called. So ridiculous. Toilet demons. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll, I'll be quite honest with you. Like, um. Japanese live action movies are usually really quite bad, <laughs> but they're very cool uh, from a cheesy point sure. of view. Sure. Yeah, there's some it. fun ones. So I really like I like Azumi and of course the Akira Kurosawa stuff from back sure. in the day is amazing. Mm. Uh Black Halo Six Winston, I've seen things. Lol after the show, I'm gonna grab beers. You guys buy beer too. Thanks. Black Halo Six with the four 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 four. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh Matt the Ginger says, I was looking way to way to embrace your appearance, by the way. <laughs> exactly. Was learning about the cultural evolution of struggle sessions this morning. Horrific. Love yes. the podcast, guys. That's yeah. awesome. And but, it was in very know, recent I mean, history as well. We should never It's forget. awesome that you learned about it, not awesome that it happened. Yes. Damien Fernando, thanks for making my work day much more enjoyable. Keep it up, hey, guys. And you as well, pleasure. Damien. Yeah. Uh sixty nine one two three. No shout, please. Okay. No shout. <laughs> not denying the genocide. I was trying to inform Winston to assist the point about ethnocides. Yes. Hey, we're not calling you out. Call down. No, 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 no. Call Thank down. you. And appreciate that. All right. We got to get out of here. This is ridiculously over, overshot. Yeah. Well, thank so you, apologize. guys. Um, I actually really enjoyed today's episode. I thought it was, it was a very lot of fun. fun. Very fun. It was a lot of fun. It was, I think it was great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm so pleased we've got a new soundbite. I know. We'll keep adding to I it, guys. Know. There's so much material. The more out there. we find out about this, these new batch of shills, I feel like we'll get more material. Absolutely. Can't wait to see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much to each and every one of you who are part of this incredibly important conversation yes, that we have. Yes, sirs and ma'ams. Guys, what we do here on a weekly basis is we make history, okay? You and us together. Thank you for being here. We can't wait to see you in the next one. Yes. And I'm not going to cut myself off this time. Oh. Gonna count down to five. Well, from five, okay.